on, y'all? It's Oliver Twix here, your nerd boy cutie, reporting for duty to do the Lord's work once again. And we are back in the classroom with the extra special to exclusive on Flavor of Love Season 2. Now, previously, we've done some deep dive in the iconic reality show that aired on VH1 years ago, beginning with Goldie talking about Season 1. And today, we have fan fave, sometimes depending on who's telling the story, the infamous, one of the most talked about still to this day. Yes, y'all, that's Larissa, a.k.a. Boots. I mean, there's just no way we can ever forget Boots, okay? Mama came in the house knocking it out the park day one, okay? Now today, we are taking an extra special look back on the iconic reality TV show with her in the classroom present to help us understand the iconic reality TV show through her lens. So without further ado, Boots is coming into our classroom, y'all. Good evening, beautiful. Hello. How are you? I'm good, and you? Oh my gosh, I'm amazing. You look beautiful right now. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for joining me over here and taking out your time to talk to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. I didn't think you were going to say yes, only because you've done like so many talks about it. And so I just really appreciate you, you know, agreeing to do this with me. Oh, thank you for having me. First of all, how does it feel to still be talking about this show so many years later? Um, I have mixed feelings, probably not what people would think. I feel like we were duped. I feel like we are not given our due justice. Mm -hmm. I feel like people leech off of us and don't give us our props. Um, I think that they think, you know, they'll make little sly comments. Oh, they're this, they're that, but we made this shit. And I know I always say that us, because it was a, in a hole, but I will say for myself, I was a big impact in that show. I wasn't just a side person, you know, following behind somebody like me or anybody that got eliminated early. I was a big, you know, character in that show. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like we don't get, you know, I do justice at all. I remember watching Flavor of Love when it was out in real time. And I hate to date you right now, but seasons one and two came out when I was in the fifth and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And that used to be the talk of the town at lunchtime at the cafeteria table. Like really? it was a huge show. Yes, it was so huge to the fact to the point that my mom, who has always been a police officer all my life, who was like very strict on me, would allow me to stay up that extra hour past my bedtime to watch the show with me. <laughs> my mama was watching the show with me. That was like one of the first shows her and I actually watched together. So. Flavor of Love is an iconic, iconic show that brought in a lot of ratings and that really like jump started what I feel, what I feel like is modern day reality TV. So I definitely understand your feelings in saying that you guys don't feel like you don't get your just due. What are some of the things you feel like you should be getting at this point? Um, at this point, um, I just feel like even back then there weren't the shows that were out now, but even now they're calling people icons that are not icons. They're calling people, you know, oh, you're reality royalty when they're not reality royalty. They're calling them that when they were just on a show and that's it. It's like, oh, well, because they have a show now, we're calling them that. That's not reality royalty. That's not iconic. That's not, that's why these shows are redundant and there's no, you know, oomph to it like our show was because. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just getting anybody and, and everybody to be an icon just because in their eyes, they're relevant. But at the end of the day, Flavor Love 2, season two will always be iconic. It will always be. I agree. I definitely agree. I mean, no tea, no shade, or I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You know what I'm saying? You know, I only like to talk and, to the icons about iconic things. And I tell people all the time, like the little kids that make all their negative comments, it makes me laugh. Because they still watch my content. They still posting that what just went viral a couple of days ago, me and my mom and Monique. So I'm just sitting here like memes of me in New York. We're the most memed out of all of the girls, you know, mm -hmm. all these years, whether we were on TV or not, you know, me and New York have been the number one memes throughout, you know, history since the show. What are some of your memes you see used the most of you on social media? I see the one with the pink monkey blanket mm -hmm. from charm school. 
Um, and they'll put their own little titles, but it's always a different title, but I see the most that pink blanket. Um, let's see, Flavor of Love mostly. They use a couple of them. They use me going off on something. They use <laughs> me going off on Layleen. They use a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Booze used to be going bananas on those people. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that y'all had like a zero tolerance physical contact rule really up the ante when it came to y'all verbally sparring. Like, bitch, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want to say because we can't really hit each other if we want to actually stay on the show. Mm -hmm. And you used to, you went up against all of them. New York being probably the biggest contender. Mm, I feel like I conquered her. I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reason why I hate when people try to bring up, you know, like I tell people, I enjoy New York as well. I'm not a mm -hmm. hater. But at the end of the day, season two trumped her season. She did not make our season. Our season became number one in the whole entire world out of her season before she even got on, you know, was a mm -hmm. uh, special guest. So people love to just, I think what they do is they like certain people or they just try to make us mad. So they say things like, oh, she did this for y'all. She, she didn't do nothing for us. We did it for us. We was totally different from season one. Those girls were totally different. We shoved them girls aside and we stamped it, period. And I feel like because we are different, that's why people like this. But nowadays, people like people to copy, like you said. They Just as long as they copy and stuff, they feel like, oh, they have a show, so it's it's relevant. Let's say that they're icons. No, they're not. They're not. Like, I don't like that. Dare I, I like ask that. you, who do you feel has gotten icon status in the reality TV game and they should not have it? Uh, I feel like everybody on Zeus. <laughs> I feel like everybody on Zeus I feel like um, yeah everybody on Zeus meaning like even from you know they wanted me to do I Love Money so bad I said no because I felt like they wanted me to do a show with New York's people I'm on a higher level than that so when we were talk about that I'm speaking of and I told them it's no shade to them because I've never met them real and chance and God bless um, real real soul but i will say that um at the end of the day i'm on a higher level than them so why am i doing a show with them do you understand what i'm saying and mm -hmm. so that's a lot of people ask well why weren't you doing i love money that's why i'm not i i felt like i did my dues i did my dues you guys are trying to throw me in here make y'all all this money you know that charm school episode was all about me i didn't win charm school anything aff affiliated with me i made it a show that's an icon you can't say that for a lot of people. The shows were not made. They may have been liked or had, you know, whatever. But when it comes to a person like me and even New York, there's nobody that you could say stood out more. Mm -hmm. Nobody. When I was the only one standing up to her, I was the only one saying something to her. I Which, love your confidence. You know, so I just feel like, and when you ask me like what shows, like when it comes to shows like um, Villains, there, I'm the first villain of reality television besides New York. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm the first villain. Most of those people are not villains at all. I was the number one. Me and Amarosa. Me and Amarosa had the same publicist back in the day after Charles. Oh, wow. Me and her have, we used to go to dinner together, her and her mom, me and my mom. So they used to look at us like them two bitches. We was the two bitches of reality television. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it was. And at the end of the day, like, if they want to talk about a villain, you know what I'm saying? That was the stamp on who I was. And me and Pumpkin actually won Best Fight um, for the first reality awards they had in Hollywood that people don't even know about, except for the people in Hollywood who actually attended. Yeah. So there's a lot of things and accolades that we did have and we should have. You know, like shows like that. Um, I heard of a show called Traders. Um, I haven't watched it, but I think that would be it's a, a good huge fit. thing. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good fit for someone like me. You know, because they said that it's icons. So I feel I fit that. You know, so things like that, those shows run around. So um, I just feel like, you know, those would be more suited for us, but they just weren't around back then. Mm -hmm. But now that they are, they need to give people their just dues that actually paid it. We paid our, paved the way for every single person. And I'm not going to knock Zeus. What they're doing is what they're doing. But at the end of the day, a, a lot of them are not icons. They're not. They're just entertaining. There's a difference. You know, would you join Zeus? It would have to be for a big bag, and and what would be the purpose? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, 
And it would have to be respectful. I'm not on the level like of them girls. I'm on a higher level, you know, and I don't like how I don't like when people think, oh, you haven't been on TV this long. It don't matter, bitch. I'm a, that's what makes me iconic. I don't have to be on TV every year. I don't have to do any of those things because what I bring, I have a track record and my track rec record speaks for itself. So any show that I get on, they're they're getting their money's worth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I don't feel like I have to um, prove myself. You know, yes. what I'm saying? anyone. And I think that that would be the only problem with shows like that. But um, as long as it had as it had a purpose and it was mm -hmm. my own show, cool. You better let freedom ring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I really enjoy about Zeus, well, one of the things I really enjoy about Zeus is how they're putting some of our favorite and most loved and iconic reality TV personas back to work. You know, they have put NeNe back to work. They've, you know, they gave Real and Chance an opportunity. New York was even over there um, supporting them. And so I could really see a space being carved out very similar to what they've done with baddies to where they can bring a lot of those flavor of love girls back um, and inject them into modern entertainment and let them be consumed by the masses. Like, I think that'd be really dope. And zoo has got the money. zoo has got a lot of money, a lot. Well, I would just say, why haven't I not done that? Maybe somebody hasn't given them an idea and pressed them about it, you know? Well, I feel like New York joining Chance's show, that should have been a deal, which you only join their show unless you have your own. Because I've heard some nasty things that he said about her, and I feel like I don't care what you say about any of the girls, but you can never dog New York for what she has done. She put him on the map. And nasty I things like make, what? Uh... You didn't see somebody show me a video of Chance saying, I guess after she went on his show on Zeus saying, oh, fuck that bitch. And all you didn't see that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It was a video where he said, fuck that bitch. She mad at me because I guess she did it. Uh, she did something like a reunion with the boys on her show, mm -hmm. something like that on VH1. Do you remember that? She did. She okay. did. She did. I, guess, see, I haven't watched these things, but this is what I just saw his rant on New York and I felt some type of way like oh wow like because at the end of the day let's keep it real New York is very humble from the clips I've seen on her on mm -hmm. his show I didn't understand where that energy came from and I just feel like that type of energy is the reason why a lot of us don't want to do shit because it's like people think just because they're on a show they don't want to give nobody they props at the end of the day she had him on her show she wasn't asking him to kiss her ass but the, the energy that he brought was he said fuck that bitch and all types of shit you could pull it up he said all types of things and it was very nasty. And I seem to get that same energy for certain people too. Like people just like to say a lot of dumb shit. And I'm the type where I'm the type where I'll I'll read your ass. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying that's that that goes to the point of I feel like she probably I don't want to say what her thoughts are, but I would regret even supporting his shit after him saying that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I mean. After that, she should have got her own shit on Zeus from off top because. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. You don't give a fuck. And I <laughs> that's what I like. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. Going back to you not being on reality TV right now, is it that you haven't gotten any offers to join any shows or you're not taking any that are being given to you? What's the deal? Well, ever since I've gotten, I left reality. Like I told people, mm -hmm. I left Charm School. They made it look like I was eliminated, but I really left. Um, at the end of the day, I got tired of the bullshit. I got tired of being um, just treated like I wasn't worth anything when I was worth everything. I was making every show, making every show. Mm -hmm. um, I got tired of it. I got tired of it. I left. I ended up getting married. I had children. Um, I'm divorced now, but I raised my kids on my own with no help baby. at all. Thank you. So I think people try to look at that like, oh, she ain't doing this. I've heard people say that, but they don't know what I really do in my real life. I'm actually very educated. I'm actually going for a couple of more degrees right now as we speak. Um, reality television has always been my um, side job. I hate when people say, oh, career, career, and oh, your career. No, sweetie, my career is very intact. This is a side job for me. You know, any extra money, that's cool. But mm -hmm. it's not a career for me. You know what I'm saying? It's very fickle. As you can see, people love you one day. 
Like I told one of my friends the other day, I was like, you know, let me get on the show right now or, or let people find out I'm a billionaire or I'm this and that. All these people are going to try to do this and that. It's all about clout. People don't love you for real. They love you when they hear about what you have. They love you. That's why I keep my life very private. They love to see what you have, who likes you. I'm not that type of person. You're going to love me for who I am or you're going to get the fuck up out of here. Like, <laughs> you, don't need to know, you don't need to know my status and mm. what I have in the bank. You don't need to know none of that because that means that you're a clout chaser. You're trying to look in an opportunist. You're trying to look mm. for something that you could use. And I don't like that. And, you know, I'm starting to realize that's what this, the TV is right now or the apps, because now it's like all about the apps. It's all about, well, what are you showing on Instagram? Oh, she's not showing this, so she's not doing that. That's not necessary. I'm from L.A. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of billionaires who go to Starbucks on their bikes looking like bums, and you would never know that they're a billionaire. You know, mm -hmm. that's where I'm from. That's the world I come from. We don't show your value and what you have to other people because you already got it. When you don't have it is when you start being flashy you start faking it for the gram. People faking relationships with bitches they don't even really fuck with. They cheating and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that bitch's DMs. You know what I'm saying? Don't I don't want no coward ass nigga. Nigga, if you can't claim me and another bitch, you need to get the fuck on. You too weak for me. <laughs> Wait, claim you and another bitch? <laughs> As long as they, if they not married, it ain't no side bitch. So you just got two bitches. I'm gonna have about four niggas. <laughs> I'm just saying. That is People be doing funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, but it's all for the gram. You get yeah, that? Yeah. Like, everybody doing shit for the gram. I be knowing a lot about people in these streets. I got my little uh only uh, what is it called? Close friends. Mm -hmm. I be talking all types of shit. <laughs> you <laughs> because I be knowing a lot. You, you need to start a podcast and just be and start telling it. I don't know. And just start telling it. Fuck it. You know, well, fuck it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> when they start fucking with me, then it's it's gonna be go down. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it. I ain't gonna mention it, but I saw I saw something probably like a year ago. I said, Oh, boots still don't fuck off, bitch. Mm-mm. I, like, That's I not in my motherfucking business. You know what I'm saying? I mind my business. I'm for what is right. And mm -hmm. I just feel like if I see something, I'm going to say something. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you this. We touched on the first season of Flavor of Love. In your opinion, who's more iconic? Flavor of Love season one, the cast, or the cast of Flavor of Love season two? Who's more iconic? Season two, of course. <laughs> and the Tell ratings, me why. And the ratings. The ratings. Mm -hmm. ratings and i think i love the fact that there was no social media except for what myspace had just started or something mm -hmm. but there was no influence so i love the fact that our ratings were pure ratings and what i mean by that is these were people who genuinely like you said your mom watched it my mom's bosses watched it you know every person of every race watched our show because they genuinely were entertained mm -hmm. i feel like that's missing nowadays um, because it's all about people see what other people like and then they follow the trend. They may not even like that show, but they'll do it because they see other their followers. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When our show was out, I feel like it spoke for itself. And mm -hmm. that's where it went. It went from who had the most ratings on what show, because those are the people who are actually taking time out to go home, mm -hmm. turn on the TV, not mm -hmm. looking back at YouTube or whatever. They're literally watching in that moment. I don't know if any of these shows could do that in this time and make those type of ratings off top. What were your season's ratings? I'm not sure, but I know they said we were number one in the world. Nobody yeah. has ever topped it. I know that. We were told, you know, and that's why we were in the we were in the magazines Britney Spears was in. People yeah. don't realize that. We were in all the star, what was it, star? Um, we might have even been in people, but we have we were in the top, you know, magazines. Yeah. And I also would say too, um, I don't like the Jersey Shore people. Like, you know, I start thinking about that because they were wearing costumes of us when we was out because they had just came out. And they start acting like, remember that little clip? I seen a clip of them with Scrappy from Love and Hip Hop. And they was talking about, oh, we the number one show. We was the first one out. No, the fuck y'all was not. They was trying to, I guess it was like some award show. Have you seen that? No. Girl, you giving me so much tea over here. Yeah, Jersey Shore was telling, I guess, Scrappy and them that I guess, I don't know if it was a love and hip hop that Scrappy won. He was something Scrappy was on. He was standing there. Is this and recent, like in recent times? This is a couple years ago. 
But okay. yeah, recent, yeah, recent, but not recent, recent. Does that make sense? It was recent yes. more uh-huh. a couple of years back yeah. where Love and Hip Hop had won something, I think, or was it Scrappy? It was one of those. And um, Jersey Shore was basically saying we we were the first reality show and did it. No, the fuck y'all was not. That's one thing that makes me mad. Like, I know, and so do the other girls. They were having costumes of every one of us because they were fans of us. But because we are not on TV now, I feel mm-hmm. like people try to underrate shit, and I don't like that shit. And nobody's calling it out, and that makes me mad. Like, no one's calling it out, so I'm going to call that shit out. You know, the right. only reason they even popped, which really I don't even think they popped. They didn't never top this. They only doing what they doing because they're not of color. Think about it. Why is it that they, what's her name, Snooki or whatever her name, got socked in the face? That's how y'all ended up getting all them ratings because they wanted to see why this girl got socked in her face. Then after that, you know, like I said, why didn't we get the stuff that they had? We had more ratings than y'all because of our color. That's what it was. We're a black show. They didn't give us what they got. They were what on MTV or what they VH1? Mm-hmm. What MTV. MTV. Mm-hmm. They didn't get the ratings we got. They didn't get none of that. But they over here hosting in Vegas. They doing all this stuff, making millions. We've heard of what they made. They made millions of dollars upon millions of dollars. They didn't give us that. They didn't give us that. And I feel cheated. I feel like we made that network for sure. I know for a fact I did. <laughs> I know. For a- I know for the fact I could say that. I can boast about that. I can say that I put a lot into that. I've gotten criticized for that. I stood on all my shit. And I feel like, you know, everybody just, I don't know. Some people are just afraid to say shit, but I ain't. And I you love know, we it. Out some shit. <laughs> uh, I feel like they need to go on and, and remake it up to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah period. You know? <laughs> I feel like we got cheated out some shit. I love that. <laughs> I would be saying that all fucking week. I'm like, she got some shit. Listen, what about season one attracted you so much to the show that you decided to audition for it? Well, actually, like looking back, it's just funny because you know I'm the youngest on the show. Oh wow! Know no, let me know. I was the, I had just turned 21, so we filmed in like April. So I had just turned 21 like months before in mm-hmm. November. Mm-hmm. So they um they let me know I was the youngest. Um, actually, the show was airing when a lady, a what is it called, a recruiter lady, just see me out, and mm-hmm. she literally told me I was pretty and said you should audition. I didn't even know the show wasn't even over yet. Like it was still on VH1. So she it was before the reunion aired. So she was telling me how Hoops didn't um Flav didn't find the girl he wanted. Hoops and him didn't work out. They're doing a season two. I'm not believing her, but then, you know, it's a different time. Like, we don't know. Reality is just now starting. We don't know Mm -hmm. if it's true or not. So she gives me a professional business card. It was at a very nice, classy place in Hollywood to audition. So I felt comfortable. We went. I went. She gave me the card, told me when to go. She said, just act like you like Flav. I get there. The guy was pretty cool. He was a white boy. He was cool as fuck. He was, we had fun. He was just asking me all these weird ass questions. And I really didn't even think none of it. I thought, oh, I just did this for fun. Didn't think they was going to call me. Didn't care. Like I owned my own business at the time. I was living in a mansion at the time. So people didn't even realize that they aired on Charm School. So people didn't even like, I didn't even think of it as like how people now they will die and do anything to be on reality back then. Like it literally was like, if they call, they call, whatever. The guy told me they were going to call, but I feel like you hear things like they Hollywood says that. We're going to call you back. You don't mm-hmm. know. I got the call. They just told us to do. They made us talk to a psychologist. Uh-huh. We, don't get, we had to speak to a psychologist. And we had to take STD uh, test. So every girl has to do that. So, and then you get on the show. So if you don't pass those two, you're not coming on. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I spoke to Goldie a couple months ago and she said the same thing but for you guys this season and I'm jumping ahead a little bit but I do find it appropriate to stop right here there became an issue with Beautiful having a cold sore if you guys had to take STD tests before you guys got in the house why was it such a topic of discussion on what Beautiful had on her lip and Flav being like disgusted if the prerequisite to being casted was that you had to be STD free. This is the thing. Cause you got hating ass bitches like crazy who made that shit up at the end of the day. Like you said, everyone was tested and we all know that. 
So she was a hating ass bitch, and I felt that was evil as fuck. You know, because that really, that really wasn't right, and I didn't like, you know, mm -hmm. her saying that because she doesn't mm -hmm. know what that did to that person. Because beautiful is my girl, like we still have each other's numbers to this day. Like, like she does not like that shit. I didn't like that shit. You know, because it's putting something out there that's not true. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Because at the time, remember, people don't know the process we had to go through. So her saying that they would think, oh, she does. She does. No, no. And I think it was just you have people who are intimidated of others. And I feel at the time, Crazy was intimidated, beautiful, because she was very naturally beautiful. beautiful. She didn't need to do too much. If you notice, she never did too much. Mm -mm. You know, so you have some women who are intimidated. And I think that's just what it was. But it was a hateful you know, thing to do and say, because like you said, people run with shit like that. They mm -hmm. really run with shit like that. Um, Flav was wrong to do that shit too. Like point blank the fuck period. He a mm -hmm. funny acting little nigga. I don't fuck with him neither. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, he got made some funny ass little motherfucking comments on this bitch and I don't like that shit. What Flav said? I ain't seen him a couple times. He been smiling all in my motherfucking face. So somebody had posted a clip of him uh, saying everybody who was doing shit and he basically and he named crazy having kids bitch i didn't have my kids a long time ago you didn't give me props but that's all good but don't you ever sit up here and say everybody from your show that's doing shit and not name me bitch that's some cloud ch chasing shit i take care of my fucking kids i do shit so how you gonna name a bitch that ain't even doing shit you know what i'm saying that took her drawers i guess because i didn't take my drawers off and i guess because i didn't do certain things you know, and fuck your ass. Maybe that's why you talking, but bitch, don't smile in my motherfucking face. I don't like fake shit like that. You give everybody props. We made that shit. Didn't nobody watch his motherfucking show for him. They watched his show for the bitches, period. They didn't watch the show for him. Did shit, only line he got is, what time is it? Fuck out of here. Want to talk about what, who doing something, bitch? What the fuck you doing? Because he ain't doing the damn thing. Did, did he forget, maybe? Maybe it slipped his mind, maybe? Are you gonna forget? And you mentioned in a bitch that just had basically what he did was he said these all these are the only girls on Flavor Love doing something. And what I'm oh. saying is yes, that's what he said. And he named Crazy, and he said, "Yeah, Crazy, I'm pr uh, proud of her. She's had she had her kid, and she's married. Bitch, I've been married and had kids. So you see the funny shit. She ain't on no show. She ain't on no show. So what? That's some funny shit. But motherfuckers ain't got to worry about me. I'll never support his ass ever fucking in life." Anybody tell me about him? Fuck that nigga. Period. You gonna put respect on my motherfucking name, <laughs> girl? You I raised my kids just because he didn't raise his motherfucking kids. I raised my motherfucking kids, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it real, <laughs> yo. I can only imagine. <laughs> Your producers, when they had to interview you, I can only imagine you had the people dying laughing during your interviews if this is how you were. Because, girl, Ooh. oh, my God. I don't know if I'm able to get through this. This is so funny to me. Um, You mentioned your lifestyle that you had before you joined the show. Um, And I've heard you actually mention this a lot of times about, like, you wasn't no struggling ass bitch. You wasn't trying to get on TV for all this other stuff. You came from a very comfortable lifestyle. Describe that lifestyle you came from. Oh, living in the hills, baby, in L.A., living in the hills. It actually was Corona, California, which is kind of the outskirts. Okay. Um, you know, some people live in the valley, like the Kardashians live in Calabasas. Those are the outskirts. So Corona is the outskirts. We live down the street from um, Serena Williams and um, Venus Williams' sister. God bless her soul. That passed years ago. Um, I was actually able to meet, um, I think it was Serena, back then after flavor love and she was like oh yeah my sister lived that's how i knew we had talked mm -hmm. about it um she was very nice and i know also um what's that man's name what's the man's name who played the joker on batman the one who passed away i don't know no, probably not him or did he play the joker the big guy or the the penguin who's the big guy who was an all the a-lister Oh, baby, name. I don't be knowing shit like I that. I forgot his name, but he lives over there. We lived right across the street from Blink-182. Um, okay. Actually, the guy who's married to Kourtney Kardashian. He was married to another lady. I forgot her name. She was beautiful, too. Um, we lived right across the street. We see them all the time at Albertsons. Like, yeah, girl, that's what Girl, what your parents did? did. <laughs> Look, they, they had businesses. 
They have businesses. <laughs> I live. I live. I live. And that's so why I get in people's asses when they be like, oh, she's just ghetto. She's just... I, I never lived a ghetto life. I'm from LA, but I've never lived a ghetto life. And if I have, it would be ghetto fabulous. Okay? Bitch. I know that's right. Okay. Um, so you touched on earlier how you got involved in the whole audition process. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to that day or that time. You audition, you talk to the white man, y'all have a good time, you leave, you had to take, um, I'm pretty sure, a psychology test, answer a bunch of questions, what you, do you see people in the corner, do you want to, you know, off yourself, all this other stuff, what you do when you're upset, you also had to take an STD test, what were some other things you had to go through during that audition process before you stepped on set to film the show? That's pretty much it. Once well, once you got to the STD and the psychologist part, mm -hmm. you're actually picked. The only okay. way you wouldn't be picked is if you failed those two. So basically, mm -hmm. you only those the people who got to that step they want you, but you need to pass that in order for them to, I guess, solidify your spot. Mm -hmm. So after that, they give you the date. Um, they tell you who's picking you up from your home or who's flying you out. But since I lived, it was taped in Encino, California. So I already was in Cali. So they all they had to do was pick me up. Everybody else they flew in. So their experience is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, but that that's they just tell you like the date, you pass your test. Um, we're picking you up, we're so excited, you know, they do all that. Mm -hmm. We're so excited for you to come to the house, meet the girls. They really love some bullshit, like oh, we can't really <laughs> you know. And they just pick me up on that day. Um, they get got us whatever we wanted. They'd be like, what do you want to eat? I remember they took me to all types of places on the way there. What do you want to eat? Oh, you want that? Okay. Um, they We stopped there. We ate. So everything was pretty much cool. I love that. I love to, I love to hear people enjoying the process. You know, mm -hmm. I've heard some scary I stories. Wish we could do it again. Like, if they could do a re... Like, Flavor Love was so fun. Like, when mm. I say fun, I'm talking all the girls. Fuck that nigga. But all the girls, <laughs> us having fun together, like... And like you said, the, just the process of mm. meeting the girls, like, was amazing. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. For me. For me. I don't no, know you, the girls. You're doing an amazing job. You're explaining it beautifully. Um, <laughs> How long were you guys outside waiting for Flav to arrive that first day of filming? Um... I don't even remember like that. I don't think it was that long, maybe an hour. But see, in the midst of that, everyone's getting mic'd. So the time's kind of flying mm -hmm. because they're trying to get the shot before the sun goes down. So they had to get all the girls from the Oh, we did go to a hotel. So they had to get all the girls from the hotel. We all, that's the first time we see each other. I remember looking mm -hmm. at everybody. I remember looking at Delicious, like, mm hmm. Look at these hoes. So I was at the <laughs> so I was, I mean, she looked at me and we just looking. Nobody was really talking at that moment. Uh -huh. Looking and they were telling us, we're going to mic you. I seen her getting mic, other girls getting mic. You know, we analyzing the bitches and, <laughs> and figure out what's about to go down. Once the mics was on, you know, they, they smile. Production smiling because they ready for the bullshit. They like, <laughs> but I don't think they were ready for what happened. I don't think they was ready. Larissa, you need to be on a podcast. <laughs> People need to get this on a weekly basis because you don't give a fuck. Mm -mm. You don't give a fuck a flying one or a dying one either. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're about to get to the fun part. We're officially about to begin Flame of Love Roll Call, where I name everyone, yes, everyone who was cast on your season of Flavor of Love. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain. This could be one word. This could be a sentence, a paragraph. It can be a favorite behind the scenes moment, a memory, how you feel about them now, really whatever you want to say. Are you ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to say is Safari. She didn't even get a name, child. Oh. Let's see. What could I... You said one word? No. I'm saying it, it can be one word. It could be whatever you want to say. Whatever you want to say. Next. <laughs> okay. Um. Let me ask you this about her. What about the iconic fight? that she had when she first walked in the house, do you remember most still to this day? I remember, what's funny is I show my kids because they were like, 
my kids be Googling their teenage, my two oldest. They be Googling talking about mommy, we know, because people would come up to me and they would be like, Why are they calling you that? Why are they call you that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they start Googling, being messy. <laughs> and they were like, Oh, mommy, we know. We be seeing clips, we know. And then uh-huh. um, so I let them see it. I said, mm-hmm. Well, I'll go on and show y'all. Y'all know. Right, <laughs> so sure. it, and they be laughing their heads off. And so they okay, me and Safari used to be cool. We are not cool anymore. So she mm-hmm. met my kids. Mm-hmm. So when they saw that part, my kids said, Is that Safari? <laughs> <laughs> and they're laughing. Like, I uh-huh. think Safari. Because you know, they just know that's Bobby's friend. Mm-hmm. They was around her a lot. That's one person I can say mm-hmm. that they remember. So they was like, That's a fire. It was just funny. So, first thing I would think for her is or in there was if even if you go back you could see me watching the fight i'm laughing my ass off and just kept walking <laughs> i wanted them to get their little hits in for flavor and then found out because if you look at it me i think it was me and beautiful walking by and i looked and just start laughing <laughs> the security running there that's why i don't think that um they were ready i don't think the production was ready because as you if you go back there was no security running over there for a long time. For a long time. For a very long time. I thought that was a funny, but the white girl was racist. She had said a lot of crazy things. For real? What's she say? I think, see, that's the thing. Now H-Town, with YouTube, right? Was that her name? Look, we don't even remember that girl. I think so. I think mm-hmm. that was her. I think. But I know, I think so, because she said, I think she was from Houston or something. Maybe mm-hmm. that was Because I know there was another tall girl and I forgot what her name was, but they look, you know, were similar. But I remember she said something ghetto trash. That's on there. I think you you can hear. She did. Me. No, she did. I do remember that. Yeah, she said ghetto trash. She said this isn't the street of Com- streets of Compton, bitch. You from Houston? What you know about Compton? Because at the end of the day, everybody knows they relate that to black folks being ghetto. Yeah. Bitch, and she said, "I'm not from fucking Compton, bitch." Like, <laughs> right. I'm from. What I'm, we from 34th, I'm from 34th and Crenshaw. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I looked at the bitch because, you know, my people is from Crenshaw. You just made me... That is racist as yes. fuck. These are and not we, the streets we, of Compton. Oh, my gosh. She's racist as fuck. And, you know, uh, straight out of Compton went out then. So what's she know about Compton? You get what I'm saying? Like, where'd she get that from? Like, you get what I'm saying? That's what I start thinking. And I was just looking the whole time. I was Because I'm standing, like, in the front when Flay came <laughs> And I'm looking at the bitch like, maybe I need to jump on this hole, too. She lucky. Because when she said streets of cop, bitch, who <laughs> the Where the fuck you get that from? You don't even, you, I wish I could just throw you into Compton, bitch, while you talking. Because you thinking that all black people is just ghetto because you got your ass whooped. That's what it was. You mad. Cause you got fucked up. <laughs> and that's just what it was. She thought she was something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In hindsight, when I watched the clip, to me, the girl hit Safari first when she <laughs> hit her with the flowers. Because you know why? Because you got you guys had to realize something. Um, she was not a contestant. Who? Safari was not a contestant. She was a spy, like like eyes. Remember eyes? How she told Flav, but because that happened, they had to act like she was, and that's why she was eliminated. She wasn't eliminated because of that. She was eliminated because they had to play it off because we didn't know that Eyes was a spy, so they played it off and kept it like that. So Safari was going to leave the house the first night too. She was supposed to tell, go with Eyes and Flav, and tell him who was there for Flav and who wasn't. Like is she, Eyes. Is she Eyes. The- Yes, and she didn't beat that this bitch true. ass. Well, like you said, that's why I think. Well, I know, you know where we from. You let bitch, we don't let bitches hit us first. So you could tell she was like she told the bitch, "Hey, you better calm down," because she knew what she was there for. Mm-hmm. But once you start hitting mm-hmm. people with flowers, bitch, it's all the crazy. Fuck this whole position. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's basically, I think, what the fuck happened. You know. It's like, shit, fuck that. I ain't gonna let no bitch hit me. We ain't get paid that much. Mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, next on the list is Eyes. She was the spy mm-hmm. for the group, and she was supposed to report back what she did and tell Flay what she had saw the first night of the house. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Eyes? 
you know, I don't even remember eyes like that um, mm -hmm. as far as in the house before we found out. Uh, if I think back, I don't really remember, but I would say she really was kind of, I see now that she was, it would be obvious now, you know, to me, because she was more so not really saying too much. Mm -hmm. You know, when I go back and think about it, I don't mm -hmm. remember her saying too much. So she probably mm -hmm. was just analyzing all the girls. Yeah. Next on the list is H-Town, who got stomped. Cool. Yeah. Little racist ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she just kept complaining her hair hurt. She was like, my hair hurt. My hair hurt. Let me hurt. tell you something. These people, some of these white folks, they do shit like that. Like, I had it. I had, I'm about to do a YouTube video on this school that tried to play with my daughter and tried to, they tried to paint us out to be, you know, crazy black women, but I really think they Googled me and they tried to use like, oh, we could use, you know, whatever. But no, nah, I'm tired of that racist shit. So I, I know racism when I see that shit. Like we can literally not do nothing and they'll say we did something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because at the yeah. end of the day, like you said, it's clear as day that this girl hit her first. Yeah. From, at least from what I see, yeah. the first hit came yeah. from the flowers. Yeah. It did. It did. Like when people say things are edited, like I don't know reality nowadays. It probably is scripted, but we weren't on a scripted show. Everything you see, that girl hit her first with them flowers. So that's how that happened. Sure. So whatever happens after, that's her fault for fucking with people <laughs> and not knowing how to uh, <laughs> throw no bow. Like that's your fault. And then you try to act like your head hurt. Well, maybe you should have threw your hands a little better instead of them flowers. Safari was tearing that girl up. She was, turn she was turning her I every which way really, step loose. Think, really, to tell you the truth, I think she took it easy on her. That's why the girl can't fight. You know what I'm saying? Because, come on now. She was trying to warn her a couple of times. Next on the list is Hood. Do you remember Hood? Hood? Mm-hmm. She was on the What's show. Like? I mean, if you don't Hood? remember. Was she on our season? Mm-hmm. These are name all names that were on your season. What's she look like? I, I definitely, I'm not even being funny. I've never remembered Hood. Next, on the, <laughs> next on the list is Chocolate. Do you remember Chocolate? I don't know. This is our, is this our... <laughs> Chocolate? Mm -hmm. They had to been eliminated that first round. Yeah, yeah. These are all, I'm, I'm naming everybody okay. in the order they was eliminated. Yeah, I def, I don't remember her. Do you remember that's Bama? And that's. This is Bama. You remember Bama? Her. I remember her. I remember her, but not like in the sense of meeting her. I mm -hmm. th excuse me. I think she was kind of cool. You know, once again, it was so it's it's so many years ago, but since they got eliminated early, I think she was cool. But that's as much as I could get out of that information, you know, out of that little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Next on the list is Wire. Oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> she was like Madonna. <laughs> she to me seemed like she wanted to be a character so badly. Wire. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was something weird about her. I know she popped pills or what, but it was some something weird. Next on the list is Spunky. You gotta remember Spunky. Mm. I don't fuck with her. I don't know. Dare I ask what happened? I will say, you could ask why, but, you know, I'm not friends with another person on the cast that people mm -hmm. thought I was friends with. But just because I'm not friends with her does not mean that I would like Spunky. But Spunky had did some shit to her. Oh, wow. That she told me. So I'm not, I don't know if it's true. I was just told that Spunky had did some crazy shit. And at the reunion, she was talking shit through the wall. And I was talking shit back, and I had to go cho choke crazy because her and crazy was in the the green room together, and they was talking shit. And I just ran in the room and choked them before the cam cameras could come running. You choked crazy and spunky. Mm -hmm. And she was no spunky was just standing there quiet. So, but they were talking like through the wall you could hear. So the cameras were in there. You know how you talk your shit like, yeah, we about to go out there. Did it? I said, bitch, we hear you, and I'm gonna get you. And then, <laughs> So the moment the camera, it was a long hallway. Like they have to run down. So when when they left, I told the other girl I don't fuck with no more. I told her, uh, Bucky. I told her, okay, when they go down the hall, bitch, I'm about to go and choke this hoe. And she was like, okay. I said, you get spunky because the shit she did to you. She said, okay. 
What so book you did? So I you said can... first, I said first, go see if the door unlocked because they kept <laughs> the door. So because the cameraman just just left, <laughs> they left it unlocked. I said, bitch, I'm going in. I go in. Bucky stayed b- behind and messed up the whole fucking shit. I'm choking crazy, crazy cr- uh, screaming. And I look back and Bucky just standing there lost like she ain't with it. Just left me motherfucking hanging. So I got her neck in my hand while she's screaming. I'm like, girl, get her. And <laughs> she like just standing there. And then she said the camera crew running. So she run back in the room. <laughs> now I got to run off and said, bitch, fuck you, do her neck aside. And I ran to the room. I see the cameraman trying to get footage so hard. Like they had to run so fast. By the time they got there, everything was over. We ran in our room and locked it. You know what's even more funny to me right now in this moment? Because I just remember <laughs> this clip of you from season two when you ran up on the stage to go attack New York, which we're going to get to later. And I just remember the hair that you had on was bouncing and you had on your black dress and your titties was bouncing and you was going like full motherfucking Olympic sprint force. That's what I'm envisioning in my head. You going into this green room. Mm -hmm. They was talking so much shit. They was talking about delicious. They were talking about me. They were talking about Bucky. So I don't know where delicious green room was, but it wasn't over there. So because Mm -hmm. we had a wall, that wall was very thin. Yeah, oh yeah. What was Spunky ready, do? I was ready for her to get Spunky because we was gonna tear them hoes up. What Spunky did? What Spunky do? You can tell me mind my, my business. You well, don't, I'm you gonna gotta... tell you. I'm gonna t- Well, this is what I was told. This is what you was and told. This is what I was told by Bucky. I was told that I don't know if you remember, but there was a sex tape. <laughs> yes. And when we did King Magazine cover, you remember that? It was a I do remember y'all on King Magazine. Me, uh, uh, Spunky and a couple an, uh, a couple other girls. Maybe like one or two other girls. I think it was Tiger, the tall, pretty white girl. It was a couple of, maybe like five or six of us. Crazy. So a couple of us. Supposedly, Bucky told me that she left her camera that had a disc in it with that on there and Spunky stole it. And Spunky put it out and I asked her, how do you know that it was her? She said, because I left my camera there and somebody's DMing me on my space saying they're going to out me. She told me that I guess she met her before the show and she just feels like it's her. And the person was threatening her on my space. Like I'm about to put you on blast. I'm about to put your video out. I'm about, they stole the camera chip i think you know where you have what is it called where you have your storage so when you plug it up all your stuff is on there and that's what i was told so i don't know but i don't i don't the tape, the tape couldn't have come out oh no honey it was out i seen it was it with a famous man this was, this was when that happened that's why i asked her how do you know she specifically did it you know because we're all famous at the end of the day, we are on the number one show in the world. If anybody gets that, they're going to put... You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it was a fake page, she said, that kept threatening her. She said she knows. So that's why when we get to the reunion, you need to bust her head wide open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what I'm saying. You know, I don't fuck with yes. her now. But even, even still, with that type of information... The way she put it to me, mm-hmm. she told me she wanted to bust her head wide open. That's another thing. So nobody's forcing her to do anything. She was tell- She was very upset. Damn. There were other things that I'm not going to share, but she was very upset. And she t- told me she wanted to beat her ass. So I felt like, well, bitch, I got this hoe and you got that hoe. And this is a perfect time because they didn't run down the hall. And what the fuck are they going to do? Tell What's y'all to go home. Yeah, what they they're not gonna tell us because the reunion ain't started yet. This is like before the reunion. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying I didn't get why she stood there. But I like I said, this is just her telling me what she feels. We I were not, you. we don't, I she didn't see her take it, but this is what she feels. So I took what she said, whatever communication her and Spunky had before, um, I believed it. Because obviously there's some type of, if you knew her before and the bitch is threatening you on MySpace. And it was just us girls. You know, you put your stuff in the corner when we were doing the shoot. She claimed that girl took it and was threatening her. So Damn. I never liked Spunky because of that. And she was a weird ass bitch on the show doing too much. Just look dumb. Like, so I just didn't like her because of different things like that. And if you're willing to do that, bitch, you need to get your ass beat. 
<laughs> Next on the list is Tiger. I don't really remember her like that as far as mm-hmm. conversating. Mm-hmm. She was more so quiet and you could tell she, you know, all I remember is like the scenes where she wouldn't kiss Flay. Wasn't that her? Mm-hmm. And um, I just don't think she liked him and she just wanted to be on TV. That's what I got from mm. that. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Next on the list is something. A piece of shit, literally. Oh my God. Fuck that bitch. She been trying to do little... You know, little, little, I don't want to call them even interviews because they don't even want her ass. But <laughs> she just be saying some wild shit that's not true. She said something about me. I don't even remember it. That's how dumb it was. And it's like, girl, please. So after the show, what I will give you the tea on was she told me she was gay and that, and she was a porn star, but she told me she was gay and that's why she was doing that to me because she wanted to fuck me. Oh, she wanted to eat your coochie from the back. Hmm. Would you wouldn't have let her? No. You don't. You don't give me. You go that way at all. I don't go that way. But if I did, it definitely wouldn't have been her. Yeah, you give me. You give me. You strictly dickly. Like, bitch. I don't. Mm-mm, I don't. <laughs> girl, no. Um. What do you remember about the night she shit it on the floor? I remember smelling shit. Like, which one of these bitches smell like shit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell. You, set the scene. We get off of the. You know how we uh, clank our glasses together mm-hmm. and do the toast at the end of the, mm-hmm. uh, what is it called? Elimination. Yeah, eliminations. I start smelling it. And I'm looking at all these hoes next to me. Like, who smell like shit? All of a sudden, you see her creeping like this. And I'm looking on the ground and you see it. Falling out of her damn dress. Clumps of it just coming out. And her it's, running up the stairs. And it seems how, like she had to go to the bathroom, but production was telling her she couldn't go. She said that. And she, I asked her, but she said, because we were drinking and didn't eat. I said, none of us ate. So they wouldn't feed us until we were done. And literally, that's all day. But I told her that you don't shit on yourself for just not eating and drinking champagne. <laughs> so I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what the fuck is going on with her? And I told her, bitch, I wouldn't give a fuck what they told me. I would have went to the bathroom. There's a bathroom right behind where Flav stands downstairs. So where we're standing at, there's a bathroom right there by the stairs downstairs. So I would have said, fuck y'all. I'm going to, what the fuck they going to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? I would have took my ass to the bathroom and then walked my ass. We would be standing at eliminations for an hour or two Mm -hmm. in those heels. So at the end of the day, I would have said, look, check this out. They could clip that shit. They could hold on and do all that, bitch. I would never... For no fucking show, shit on myself because you, and your excuse is you thought that they would be mad. They would just be mad, just like with um, just like with um, New York saying she didn't want to be pumpkin ass. I wouldn't give a fuck about them cameras. And if Flav had a problem, he would have got his ass beat too. You got a problem with me beating a bitch ass that spit on me? But we gonna stay on topic though. <laughs> So later on in the season, we see you two like go at it upstairs, right? It's just like the point is, the point is, you like ain't no motherfucking that was the point. Second time, remember the first time was when she was in the room with Delicious, and mm-hmm. she said she was gonna hit me when I left, and she didn't mm-hmm. know I was listening. Remember? Yeah. So second time was the next day. Why are we all so at it so bad? It was because she had sexual tension with you. No, I think because she wanted to run her motherfucking mouth like she was that bitch. <laughs> And thought because I was cute, she let this face fool her. And she was going, I was going to show her ass. Don't let the cute face fool you, boo, because you will get fucked up in this motherfucker. So I stood there because I knew what type of bitch she was. I could see it all on her face. Like, oh, I'm going to try to punk her. No, bitch. And you saw every time I came up in the house, she either backed up or she got quiet. So it's like, where was that energy? Like, why haven't you done anything? Then she going to say, well, that's because we signed a contract. Bitch, you knew we signed that contract for you was talking shit. Next on the list is Patience. Do you remember Patience? Oh, I don't like Patience. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I don't like that girl. So, I'm glad you we talking about this. So, Patience is what you call a colorist. Girl, you in the mix with Twix, honey. That's what we do over here. Okay. We talk about the shit. Patience is a colorist. And, you know, back then, we didn't have words for it. We didn't have that but word. But if you mm-hmm. go back, you can see me say, I don't like her talking about black men. But then when we talk about her, because she's mixed with black and Asian. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't like when we talk about the Asian side of her. She has an issue, and it's all serious and shit. But we were just talking about niggas. And I think that was edited out, but I didn't give a fuck. She knew. 
You know what I mean? As she knew the conversation. Mm-hmm. When I'm talking about niggas, you all good. But when we talking about an Asian dude, you getting way too serious. It's not that motherfucking serious. <laughs> I felt like I need to go back and watch it too because all I remember is us sitting down laughing and she stopped laughing. Do you remember that when we was out? Yes. Outside? So all I remember is that. So for, what? Because I, I I rewatched it today. So okay. you were joking. Y'all was sitting at the table. Y'all was joking. And it kind of seemed like you two had like some type of like a camaraderie or like, you know, y'all had a rapport with each other because you, you said something to the effect about um you you said something to the and I'm paraphrasing about her wanting to fuck Asian men with small dicks. And she got like super offended that you of all people would say that because it seemed like y'all had maybe had some like rapport with each other. And she was like shocked. No, she wasn't shocked. That bitch was offended because she obviously <laughs> liked Asian men more than black men. And that's what that was because she a fucking colorist. And we roomed together. So we would talk a lot. So when you say rapport, we were somewhat, I don't want to say friends because we didn't know each other, but we were like that. So whatever people think and me and Bucky was, me and her were kind of like that. We roomed Got together. You. Me and Bucky wasn't like that. We were cool. You know what I'm saying? But I think just because people see us around each other more, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's why with Bucky, but with patients, we were kind of what people think me and Bucky were. And oh, we would, wow. we, yeah, we would talk shit. You know, you talk shit with your friends, talk mm-hmm. about niggas. And then we talked because she's make she was make comments as well. But see, that's why I felt like she was a fake bitch, because you're getting real serious. Like you want a moment and make it look like something. Do you get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because we do this all the time. I think I said that. Mm-hmm. Remember when I was packing my stuff, I said, bitch, we be joking all the time. Mm-hmm. So you could tell like we always be talking about this and joking, but it's funny how you get mad, but when we talk about black dudes, you ain't this mad. So what's what's the problem? You know, like, it's not that fucking serious. <laughs> it's really fucking not. Like, I didn't get it. So I told on her ass because I said she ain't about to send me home. I thought I was going home. So I said, bitch, I'm just about to tell on your ass what you tell on me. And, and I forgot what she said I did. I think, didn't she try to bust it out of eliminations? Boots did this. She said something like that. I don't and remember. I don't remember her saying that. He, uh, Flav asked her something. She said, yeah, because Boots tried to, I forgot what she said, but she tried to put me on blast. And, or did she take him aside? See, I forgot. I don't know if she took him aside. And I found out and I said, I need to go tell him some shit before. Mm-hmm. I, I told, So I let him know. She don't like your black ass. She mm-hmm. like Asian dudes. And what the fuck <laughs> you here for? What so can she talk about the house? What could she have told him that could have got you eliminated at that point? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I think she could have said, she could have said anything. She could have lied and said, she told me she don't like you to just to get me out. Do you get what mm-hmm. I mean? Because you got to think about it. Once we found out Ice was a spy, I'm not trusting none of these bitches. You don't know what they doing. Yeah. Bitches would go tell him shit. That's what I start noticing bitches would. So I didn't I didn't put a finger on it, but I knew I don't trust this bitch. So let me go and tell him some shit before she could tell him anything. And what she could have told him was something like to the effect that I don't like him. I'm starting shit and mm. I'm doing whatever. Because at that time, y'all, I remember, we don't know this is what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, nowadays people know they want drama and they can do this. We didn't know that. So y'all, thinking, y'all giving it to him. Yeah. So I'm thinking he can eliminate me thinking like I'm just up in here being messy. You know, so that's I was like, fuck that. I'm about to secure this shit. I'm about to tell this nigga this bitch is fake. So that was your idea to go talk to Flay. Yeah. Production didn't tell you Flay didn't ask they you. Was- never told me. Let me tell you, production has a, that's why I can't relate to this new reality shit. Production has never, ever told me to do nothing. The only thing that I could tell you production told me, which they never told me to do anything, but they did when me and Crazy got into it and I was chasing her up the stairs, was all they said before that happened, when you see me walk in, I was chilling somewhere by myself just thinking about some shit. And they must have been noticing because they have a control room where they watch us. And they just Mm -hmm. came up from the control room by myself and they was like, don't you think Crazy's being kind of fake? (laughs) <laughs> so I was like, it was like a little demon, right? And I said, she sure is being fucking fake. And they was like, I think, don't you think you should go down there and say, I said, yeah, I do think I should check her ass. They were like, she's downstairs. So I said, I'm going downstairs. That's why I'm walking in like that. Mm-hmm. But it was like the devil in my ear. They should have said that. They was like, don't you think? So they was, you know, putting some shit up, but they never told me to. Mm-hmm. But they were just like, let's get her a little mad. Tell but they knew, that. right. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what they did. They were like, don't you think she's being a little fake how she was outside? Oh, they did say how she was outside with his friends and she didn't even know his song. That's what uh-huh. 
<laughs> and then I thought about it. So maybe I was talking about it to beautiful or something. It was something I was doing. And then I sat there for a minute thinking like, I don't like this bitch. But I didn't know what the fuck she was doing. And they just came like, let's go get Larissa to go over here and check this bitch. And that you did. Mm-hmm. Next on the list is Toasty Jennifer. Oh my goodness. All I remember is the clip I had posted a couple months ago when Toasty was talking about nibbles, Jack and Flav, and all that. Did you believe her when she told y'all that? Yes. I believe that all the girls were doing something but me, and I'm going to tell you why. When he asked me to do it with him, and I said I was celibate, I felt I knew right then. He's only asking me because they already did something. Do you get what I mean? And I'm the only one who hasn't. So at that moment, when she said that, I believed her. But Nibbles was my roommate, too. And Nibbles is a real bitch. She's very freaky, and she, but she's very open. So I knew about Nibbles because she will tell you her shit. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So when... Toasty, I knew also Nibbles told me some things. See, the girls didn't know me and Nibbles talked to a lot. And she told me some things about, she would be like, she wouldn't say everything because I guess Flav didn't like telling his business, but she would tell me some things to insinuate things. So I knew what was jumping off, but she wouldn't tell me exactly what happened. But I knew that her and Toasty, some little funny stuff was going on. So I told her what Toasty said. And that's when she said, oh, really? Because I know all her fucking secrets. And remember, she said that. I know all her fucking secrets. So then that's why I was like, mm. and she started telling it because she got mad that Toasty was telling us shit. So then I knew, oh, y'all is up in there doing some shit because she basically said, yeah, we was both in there. That's what she said. So that's when I'm like, oh, so y'all hoes just up in here getting it popping. <laughs> so that's how that happened because Nibbles will tell you like, yeah, I sure did. But that bitch was up in there too. So why she tell? So that's what she told me. Nibbles admitted, yeah, I was off, but she was too. So what the fuck is she telling y'all some shit? Trying to start some shit like I'm just a hoe when she a hoe too. That's what Nibbles said. I hate to stop here and talk about Flav's penis, but I remember an interview of New York in recent times talking about how big it was. Like it's New York talks about it like it was just like some monstrous, long, big. Mm -hmm. Fixture. Well, you know, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear any other other girls talk about it? Uh, Nibbles told me. What I she think said? that's why I believed it. Because, you know, New York is such a character. Uh -huh. I don't know what to believe sometimes. Sometimes I think maybe she's putting on. I don't know at the moment. Mm -hmm. But when Nibbles told me, I'm telling y'all, Nibbles is so open. Like, mm -hmm. she, you will trust what she said. She told me. She said, he's hung like a horse. That's what she told me. Girl, um, how gagged were you at that elimination when it was down to Nibbles and Toasty and Flav whips out this new photo of Toasty and it's like, you do porn. I couldn't believe it. We were all shocked and scared. Like, what the fuck he gonna pull on us? Like, <laughs> what the we did that? But in my head, I got nervous. You know how you be nervous at the doctor's? When you get your AIDS test and you like, you know you ain't got it, but you just nervous. That's how I felt. Like, I felt like I know I ain't did poor, but I'm scared as fuck right now. <laughs> I was terrified. Like, and, and then we really didn't know we didn't have nothing on us. But then remember back then there really wasn't no internet. So in my head, I'm like, what is he, where did he pull? It was internet maybe, but you know what I mean? It wasn't like now where we have phones, we have Everybody mm -hmm. has a laptop. It was different. Like, so I was thinking, how did they find? Here's that? what I think. Here's what I think. I think, I think maybe she told them she had taken nude photos because in my brain, mm -hmm. taking a nude photo and doing porn is two complete different things. It's a it's one thing to take your shirt off and pose sexy and be nude. It's another thing to be on tape getting a dick shoved down your vagina. You know what I'm saying? That that's two separate things. So I can see where she was like, when they asked her, have you ever done porn? If she had never done a flick or had sex with anyone on camera, I can see why she said, no, I've never done porn. Um, but she told Nibbles. So now that you said that, it makes me think production could have went to Nibbles and said, because Nibbles said on camera, I know her porn name. I think she said it to me. And I said, oh, really? Nibbles so did say that. Nibbles did say that. 
Uh-huh. And she they probably asked Nibble behind Natalia, the camera. Natalia, did she say? What's her yeah, name? Yeah, Natalia. Yep. And maybe they asked her and then Googled it. And then Googled it and found it. They had to because I know for a fact Nibble said her her stage name was Natalia. She put it all on blast when she told Flay. And she told me. She was just like, I said, really? But in my head when she told me, I didn't think too much of it because uh, wasn't Laylene on season one? Wasn't she a stripper? So mm-hmm. I didn't even think that this would be something like, like you know what I mean? And then, you know, now that I think about it, her and Boots, not Boots, her and Nibbles would have been cool because Nibbles was openly about her being a sex worker on the internet with her pole and stuff like That's that. That's they were fucking him together. You see what I'm saying? That's what they were doing until Toasty tried to out her. That's so if they they were buddies, fuck that. Oh my you see what god! I'm <laughs> Toasty drunk ass came to us and was being messy. She was drunk. Oh my god! <laughs> um, next on the list is like that. Oh, uh, like that was funny. Okay. She was funny. She's like an auntie. Mm-hmm. You know, that would have us be laughing our ass off. She's from New York. She's from New York? Yeah, I think she's from New mm-hmm. York. So that was different for me. I like New York people. So that was funny. It was just funny. Her lingo, how she would check people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was funny. Yes. Okay. Girl, okay, girl, uh, girl, no team, no shade. I think that's the first person you gave a compliment to in this whole list. I think she the first one. Come on like that. That's the way it is. Mm-hmm. Um, next on the list is Beautiful. Beautiful is my girl. She's classy. She's sweet. Uh, she don't play no no shit with nobody. Mm-hmm. You know, I like that. So, mm-hmm. Um, like I told you earlier, season two of Flavor of Love was out when I was in the sixth grade. And mm-hmm. I remember while it was out, seeing a photo of Beautiful in a hair campaign. And I remember looking at it, I was like, is that beautiful? That's beautiful. Like, that's her. And I remember the background was pink. I can't remember it specifically. Uh-huh. I'm sure if I Google it, Google her name, and make her... Green. That I feels think... familiar. Maybe it was for pink lotion? Maybe? That, or was it a perm? I think it was a perm. One of those. Mm-hmm. Yes, but nonetheless, I remember seeing her face on a box around the same time that she was on Flavor of Love. And I was like, okay, beautiful out here. Like, she she doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Talk to me about Beautiful in the House because a lot of footage isn't really shown of her. And I feel like she was more of, like, a supporting character to y'all who, like, the leading ladies were, in my opinion, of y'all group were Delicious, You, and Bucky. Um, and it seemed like she was friends with y'all, but more so of like in a supporting role from the viewer perspective. Did was she funny? Was she fun? Did she get into any drama? What was she giving it? What was she giving in the house? The staff is all stuck. So I will say, I hate when people try to say like say that, but beautiful was like the closest person I was to, to in the house. We okay. had beds next to each other. Mm-hmm. She was a cosmetologist. I was a cosmetologist. Um, she's from Chicago. I was from LA. So, like, we had a lot of things in common. We mm-hmm. were the closest in the house. I was so sad when she left. I say that all the time. Um, I think that I don't know why. I don't know what people see when they watch it. I mm-hmm. don't know. But I hear it a lot that they think me, Delicious, and Bucky were close, mm-hmm. but we were not. It that's seemed, how that, that's how it looks on the show. Everybody says that, but once I was there, I remember like nibbles. We would talk. I would talk to the girls in the room with me more, you mm-hmm. know. But of course, it being edited, you're not gonna see everything, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I was cool with the other girls, like Delicious and Bucky. And I think once girls started dwindling down and getting eliminated, um, you would see us more together. Maybe that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um. But me and Beautiful were like the closest in the house. She was fun. I um, I feel like Beautiful is like me. She's just not. I feel she's feisty, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Not like me. Like I'm more boisterous. <laughs> she say what she want to say, but it's not going to be the way I do it. Does that make sense? She's a little more mm-hmm. classier with it. Uh, unless she got to get crazy, but she really don't 
you know, get loud like that um, that I've known. But she will definitely say what's on her mind. I love that. Yeah. Next on the list is Nibbles. Nibbles is a freak. <laughs> oh, my God. She is a freak. She one of the girls that I feel what they call Instagram models now. Mm -hmm. Like she gets down, but I love Nibbles because Nibbles kept it real. Like mm -hmm. she, like anything she do, she gonna tell you, yeah, I'm a hoe or yeah, I do this or yeah, I sucked his dick or yeah, I did this. You know what I'm saying? So I like the fact that she kept it real like and all the time from what I've known and she was my roommate. So I talked to her, you know, a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. Dare I ask some of the things she used to come back and tell you that she was doing with Flav? From what I remember, she would just say, like I said, she would kind of insinuate because I guess he didn't want her telling. So she was kind of secretive at first and I would try mm -hmm. to get things out. But she would just try to say things like, well, we just spent the night with him. But when Toasty came, that's why I said that's when she kept revealing things. But more so, it was like, um, what's the word with someone has revenge and they're just telling it all but mm -hmm. i don't know the order you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. now she just mad saying stuff like well we be in there with him all the time and she was jacking him off too so i don't know the order but she telling me you know and she said he was hung like a horse so i'm like y'all probably was sucking fucking together all types of shit <laughs> so, who knows? next on the list is buck wow Uh, you want me? To, you want me to tell you what I feel of her now, you, or like it's, it's really whatever. It's however you want to respond. I'll just do it from the show, I guess. Uh, Buck Wild to me was wild. Okay, it was just a wild personality. Um, I felt like she was a nice girl, and you know when we talk, but that was more of a character too, as far as Buck Wild goes. You know, I think she was a sweet girl. She could not have been on TV. And but you know what? I say that. I'm sorry, but we got people like Daniel, Danielle Brigoli, the little uh, catch me outside girl. Never mind. Oh. I was I was about to say Buckwild would have got dragged, but never mind. Never mind. I I had to correct my own self. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Iggy Azalea. Mm. Mm, yeah. Before all this, I mean, it was yeah, she was the first. Yeah, then Buckwild was the first. Look, she better start put, putting her claim on it. Yeah. What What about now? What, what, what was you like, about now? No, we just got into it um, on the Shade Room comments. What was My that? Cousin. I, I mentioned out on everything. So I don't go through comments. I think it's mm -hmm. corny. Um, especially when they talk as shit, because we know they all want to be besties in the comments when they talk as shit. So I had got into it with Bucky and this was, um, she was talking shit and I talked my shit and it ended up on the shade room with me saying she looked like DW from Arthur. And my cousin calls me and says, Buck Wilds in the comments talking shit. And I said, where? So she had to show me. Cause I said, I know this bitch ain't talking shit because she had, cause I live in Vegas. So she came. And to Vegas with Safari. And at the time, me and Safari were friends. Mm -hmm. And Safari told me she didn't want to come out the room because she was scared that I was going to beat her ass. Because she had, I forgot what she did, but I told her next time I see you, I'm going to beat your ass. So Safari said she's scared to come downstairs because she said you're going to beat her ass. <laughs> and I said, but I said, I'm not going to beat her ass. I want to have fun. You know, they was in Vegas. I really wasn't going to fuck with her. She really did not come out the room. So me and Safari just went out. And so I said, I know this bitch ain't talking shit when you was just scared to come out the fucking room and you on the shade room comments talking shit. So that's kind of like, after that, we had words in the DM. I'm going to fuck off. Like, bitch, you, I'm telling her everything I'm telling you. Bitch, you was just out here. If you had something to say, bitch. She, I forgot what she said in the comments. It was some corny ass shit like she always say. It didn't even match what me and old girl was talking about. Maybe she said something like, it's old. Bitch, it's not old. You don't know what the fuck going on with me and old girl. She keep making comments because she intimidated by me and my motherfucking work. That's what the fuck it was. I said, so I checked the bitch. I said, bitch, you don't even know what the fuck you talk about. Stay in your room like you was when you came to Vegas. So we had a couple words. I was in her DM. She was like, if you want to fight me, I'm old. So we could just fight and get over with. I said, bitch, stop talking. I just want you to stop talking shit and acting like you with it. If you're not. If the energy you have in these DMs, keep it that way. You don't know what's going on with me and her. 
You know what I'm saying? Why are you trying to be funny when it's not fucking funny? I forget she said some corny shit. But I just didn't like you chiming in. But when you saw me in person or could have, mm -hmm. you had nothing to say and was scared as fuck. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that is stupid. You know, I don't like people like that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, no, if you're scared, stay scared. But don't go in the comments now. You know what I'm saying? And I think getting all hype and crunk. Like, yeah, and you hype and crunk talking shit. So <laughs> we, can't, we squashed it in the DM, but oh, well, I, that's good. I let her know. What it was. I said, just don't do that shit. So we agreed and, and kept it moving. Real I told you that was the only issue that I had. I don't like fake stuff. Like, don't do shit for the gram. Stop doing that for the comments. You know, the shade room famous for that. People will say all that types of shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody that fuck with me or been around me know I'm cool as fuck. But just don't play with me and be dumb. Like, stop being stupid. Like, if we don't have a problem, don't make it a problem. Yeah. You know? Um, one second, child. <laughs> It's like I'm giving y'all a whole story on each place. Oh, but bitch, I'm enjoying it. I'm so entertained right now. That's what I'm saying. You need to do a podcast. You are so entertaining. All right. Now, I wasn't going to say her name, but I heard you say it. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. Next on the list is Bucky. What I you, feel? I'm going to let you respond how you want to respond, okay? Because you ain't going to cuss oh, me out. I don't want to get make, cussed she out. She just make the flavor of love look bad. Because... Okay. When you get on a show, you need to be the star of the show. There wouldn't have been a Jocelyn. So I just think, you know, it just makes us look really bad. You know, when New York's on a show, she's the star. When I'm on a show, I'm the star. I didn't even win Charm School. It was about me. And I just think when you get on a show, you know, we're rooting for you like Tyra. And you just ruined it. Okay. Because I don't know why there's a Jocelyn when you're on there. And we're supposed to be icons. Well, you are. Right? <laughs> Is that all you want to say? I just feel bad that I just feel bad that she ain't pulling through. You know, it just makes us look really bad. Is there a possibility that you two can ever reconcile? And no. if so, what would have to happen? Never. Never. Okay. And I will tell you why. Okay. We have had mutual friends try to put us together when I told them. Why not? Some understood because I don't play with my kids. She has been around my children when they were very little mm -hmm. and my ex-husband. And she has publicly said nice things about my kids and my husband in when I'm around. And we got into a little, we were like sisters. We got into a little spat and she, I had no clue she had an issue with me, but we have each other's number. She had just left my home. We got into it on Twitter at the time. It was Twitter I called her. She hung up in my face, but then was on Twitter talking shit. So I talked my shit and I told her that's weak as fuck. That's cowardly. You know what I'm saying? Because you just want back then it wasn't called clout, but it was more so like, let's get this on online. You know, mm -hmm. so she tried to hang up like a coward. Make a long story short. I was telling her about this hating ass bitch from back in the day, not from the show that knew of me. And she wanted to be me. And I told her about the girl, you know, how you tell your friends. And back then, now people know people that stalk them. You know, they'll mm -hmm. put them on blast. Back then, this is new to us. But I was telling her she's making fake pages of my kid. So after, make a long story short, when me and her fall out, she goes and follows this page that is talking shit about my daughter. Then she goes, as uh, yeah, she, fo she follows the page knowing what I told her. And I said, ever since then, I'll never fuck with that bitch. Never. You fuck with my kids, bitch. I don't give a fuck. First of all, I don't give a fuck what me and any of these girls go through. I will never talk about their children. Mm -hmm. the only time I've talked about somebody's kids is when they talked about my family. Mm -hmm. That was Laylene. And, you know, a lot of people, we going to get to that, though. But a lot of people will say, well, you talked about Laylene. No, bitch. I talked about her kids when she talked about my mother. I didn't have kids, so she couldn't talk about my kids. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she tried to talk about my family, and the only thing I knew of her was her kids and how she didn't take care of them. So I can say what the fuck I want when you start crossing boundaries. So, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you did this. No, bitch, I did it for a reason because she talked about it. People forget that. You know, they mm -hmm. want to ignore that because I've overpowered her ass. But going back to Bucky, uh, yeah, I would never fuck with her because you don't talk about nobody. kids. One of my friends ended up going at her, going at it with her that she met through me. Mm -hmm. And then she tried to unfollow the page. And she told my friend, this is what my friend told me, that she said, you know, Larissa and me and like sisters, we fight. Did it? Nah, bitch, you, you, you coming in doing some funny shit 
like that. When you know, it was like a hate page towards me, but the girl had put up pictures of my child and was saying weird shit. Mm -hmm. So when Shay's following that page, when I already told her what the girl was doing, she's seen this page before I showed it to her. So for you to do that and thought that was cute and that has to do with my child, I will never fuck with you again. I will never. And a lot of people will t point out things that's going on with her and her child to me. And I don't want to hear it, but they'll say it's karma. And I say, I don't look at it because I don't boast in other people's kids or whatever. But from what I hear, she's getting karma anyway for that. Oh since you're, you know, talking about people's kids. Oh, my God. Um, so, okay. Yeah, that's the only reason. If it had nothing to do with my child, we probably could. But I feel that's very evil. And it wasn't even nothing serious like that. But, bitch, you play with my kids, you playing with me. This is like that. You don't do shit like that, especially when you met my kids. You know what I'm saying? You've been around my kids. You've been in my home, stuff like that. I don't like shit like that. But she always been a jealous bitch anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's spill some more tea. Because oh I'm not just in the mood. The reason why, because, you know, a lot of people talk shit. But I'm going to tell you why I say she's jealous. Because she is. There are facts. You remember when I did the Fabulous video? No, baby. Enlighten me. I'm the sorry. Fabulous music video. I was the lead girl. What's what's what songs I can go look at after oh, you baby done. don't go. Oh. Baby don't go by Fabulous. I am the lead girl in the video. Back then, you know, we didn't have like I said the Instagram to hit up the artist or the model or whatever. So in order to get to me, remember me and Shay were not cool, but Shay wanted to be in this video so bad they used her to get to me. Got my number, gave it to Fab because he was looking for me, mm -hmm. and he told me to name my price. He wanted me to be the lead. I did with it. He flew me out the next day. We did the video in the middle of the video. This bitch yelling and screaming, not knowing. So, you know, when you do the videos, the music's really loud. Mm -hmm. So we were, they had cut the music off to direct. And in the middle of them cutting it off, you hear her screaming. Why the fuck is she um, in the video more than me? Why the fuck y'all got her as the fucking lead? I don't have no part. So I'm listening. Everybody hears this. Everybody. So I think somebody like the director ran back there to tell her to shut the fuck up or whatever, because everybody can hear. When she, Whenever I saw her next, when she walked up to me, I asked her, so what the fuck you was yelling about? Just to see what she was going to say. Because I heard her. She goes, nothing. What are you talking about? I wasn't yelling. I said, you was yelling. I heard you. She goes, oh, nothing. So I just looked at her. That's when I knew, oh, you a jealous ass bitch. You jealous and you mad. Because I guess that's why I'm saying they must have told her you'll be the lead with Boots to get me, to give her, to give my number. Does that make sense? So mm, Fab can get me. I she get what you're saying. That I was the girl and she was used to get that girl. And I tell everybody, even if you look at every season, it's no shade to nobody. It is what it is. I put in my work. I'm that girl. You know what I'm saying? But it just seemed like you got so angry and you're screaming. I just wish I would have recorded it. But, you know, back then it wasn't like now. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm pretty sure if it was like now, somebody would have recorded that shit. But everybody on that set know what I'm talking about. Like, she was screaming at the top of the line, mad as fuck because she was the sidekick. Oh, my God. I'm Batman and she's Robin. Oh my God. All right. Well, I that, was a little, that was a little tea to that, but that's, I like to support why I say things. Cause you know, when people say, oh, she's just hating cause so-and-so, no, there's no hate here. There's facts to back up what I, why I feel the way that I feel and how I know that I don't bother anybody. I was nothing but a good friend to her. And at the end of the day, you don't play with my fucking kids. You don't play with me cause you a fucking jealous ass bitch. You don't do shit like that. And then when we got into it on the shade room, that's why she said, oh, I don't know how it started was. You know how people ask you questions on Instagram. She tried to be funny and say, I don't know why Boost don't like me. It's probably because of my success. I said, bitch, what success? What Forbes list are you on? Please let me know. Because I never seen you on the Forbes. That's when I would be jealous of somebody. Other than that, bitch, what are you talking about? Because you're not a Jocelyn. Oh, Hell, God. from what I found out, you wasn't even a main cast member. But you're an icon, though. Get the fuck out of here. Always been the sidekick. Always been the side bitch. Always. So let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I'm just tired of that narrative. <laughs> you know, trying to play. I don't know me. if to shake my head. Yes, no, maybe so. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mind my business. I care about mm -hmm. people. But you're not going to, you know what I'm saying? Do some crazy no, I hear you. 
you know, you're not. And and it, saying stuff like that, like I'm jealous, but you have nothing to be jealous of. Nothing. Zeus, Zeus needs to bring back that show, the conversation, and write the check for both of y'all to sit across from each other because they got the money. Zeus got a I lot hear, of money. From what I hear, they asked, and she said no. Would you have done it? I sure would have. Because me and Bobby are cool, and Bobby told me he wanted us to do it. And I said, um, I would be down. I, I, you know me. She ain't going to. This is the thing. People don't like for them to get called out because what she did was fucked up. So when people hear that you were talking about my child and you did that type of shit, people don't want to be put on blast. So really all it's going to be is she can't defend that. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. we us having a conversation, it wouldn't even make sense because she don't want to look bad. Who would? Because what she did was foul as fuck. And it, and it shows. I have so much. It shows you're just jealous. She don't want to look like she a jealous bitch. She don't want to look like that. I will call that shit out like it is. Ooh, child. And you know, some bitches know they can't go against me. They can't. They can't. Matter of fact, I think somebody told me she was on her live. Let me say this too, because we're going to have to confront this shit that she said, I'm not going to give her that. Baby, I am the clout. Because let me have been on any platform. I'm always the star. That speaks for itself. So the comment of you wouldn't give me that you couldn't give me shit because you couldn't give yourself nothing. So she made that comment, basically saying it she wasn't. I guess thought she was somebody and was gonna give me something. You couldn't give yourself a damn thing. Larissa, Larissa, you don't give a fuck. No, <laughs> no, I don't. You, and you don't know, give it a makes fuck me mad. Good people, goddamn. You know, it makes me mad when people get mad at people like me because I tell the truth. It has nothing to do with clout. I am the clout. Everybody knows when I do things, you know, I'm very authentic. That's why season two was what it was. People like people who are outspoken, who tell the truth. They don't want a follower, somebody scared to say certain things. I keep it all the way 100. And when I keep it 100, it makes people that are fake look crazy. Because speaking, of crazy, <laughs> speaking of crazy, speaking of crazy, let that Bucky breathe. Let that Bucky breathe. Speaking of crazy, next on the list is crazy. On the list. Okay, what were we saying about them? Look, we, we, we were still doing roll call. Okay, so what I think of her. Mm -hmm. Me and crazy are friends on Facebook. Oh, I love that. Yes. Look, last time I checked, I don't know. But I ain't been on Facebook in so long, but we last time I checked, we were. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'll just address it uh towards the show because now, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody got kids, everybody's like, you know. Mm -hmm. But from the show, I just felt like she wanted to win so desperately. I mm -hmm. felt like she was doing the most. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like she thought because she was Puerto Rican and she is she Puerto Rican or Mexican, whatever she is, that she knew Flav liked that look and aesthetic mm. and she thought she was better than the black girls. I do feel that way. Mm. And the other girls have said that. I think Delicious had said it. She knows oh, that he wow. likes that aesthetic and she thought that she was going to win. Was she hunching Flav? Allegedly. <laughs> I, from my point of view, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I mm -hmm. will say from the footage of her taking her underwear off, I would believe that allegedly you did. Because if I'm taking my drawers off, we're getting it popping. Yeah, I know when my drawers come off, what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cheers. Oh, so, I mean, you know, and I forgot the line that Delicious had said about, didn't you take your drawers off? So... So, I'm gonna tell you so the delicious shit did it just like this. So you ain't telling me you got in the hot tub with him and take your drawers off. <laughs> That's how you know Shaja was telling the truth, bitch. Hmm. So you ain't telling me. Did she tell her she did it though? What she say after that? I think she started denying it. Oh, okay. But then mm -hmm. they showed the clip and she got busted. And that she potentially got busted. Because they showed that clip. That's how that's how I was like, ooh. Girl, you gonna lie, and then they they so funny. They gonna show the clip right after. Um, next on the list is New York. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even expecting your so. We could do before and after. So mm -hmm. I feel like when New York came in the house, I did not like. I already knew. Okay, we didn't know about characters. Let me mm -hmm. say that. 
but I didn't know she would thought she was that bitch. And I had to show her how I was that bitch. <laughs> like I told her, I think she settled down when I told her she was just a friend. Mm -hmm. Because I, I noticed she thought, oh, I'm going to do it to Flav and I'm going to take, take Flav from these girls and win this season. I knew what it was. So I let her know, girl, you just a friend. He just knocking it up for now just to get his rocks off. And you notice she kind of piped down, didn't know what to say at first. Because it kind of baffled her. <laughs> <laughs> but I think New York, as the time goes by, when I watched the show, she did say I was one her favorite when mm -hmm. Flav asked her in the limo. I start realizing how TV went. Mm -hmm. I will say New York was a genius at that because she mm -hmm. knew before we had any examples, you know, of yeah. what they wanted. Because me going in there, I was just me. But if I was on reality television, now I see people do play it the way they want. They play it safe. We didn't have that, I guess, um, security. Mm -hmm. We literally were just thrown in a whim and whatever happened, happened. They edit the way they want. And, you know, as far as the storyline they wanted and went went from there. Uh, um, I do think that New York knew. I think she liked me now that I see saw it. Because, you know, we didn't see it till later. Mm -hmm. Once I saw it, I thought I, I could see why she liked me. Because she saw whatever it was in TV. She saw, like, you know, it was entertaining mm -hmm. that I kept it real. I will say one thing I can say is New York kept it real. Do you think it was always in the plans for New York to get back in the house? I do. Do you think she I knew that when she came? House. Huh? Do you think she knew that when she came? Or was she really shocked that Flav asked her to be back in the house? I think she knew. But I think that I will tell you what I think she was shocked about. I think she thought she was going to run some shit. I think she thought I'm that bitch, I'm HBIC, and I'm gonna come in here and wreck the shit until she met me. Until I came down them stairs when I fucking felt like it. When I was in her face, like, bitch, no, we're not doing what the fuck you just said. We're not doing that. I think she thought in that moment we could possibly be fighting. I think she knew right then, like, okay, this ain't going away. I thought I, go. I thought I was gonna run these hoes, tell them to stand their ass in line. Because, honey, if she would have told me, I look like trailer trash. She told one of them girls in line, mm -hmm. who was it? Buck Wow? Yeah. Looking like trailer trash. She you said, and your trailer park park. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't stand. I don't know. That's just me. I, I ain't standing there for you to ridicule me, bitch. Mm -hmm. I'll be talking about you. I, that's why you saw I didn't line the fuck up. I'm not Please lying don't, to don't, don't Don't get mad at me. But so, don't get mad at me. But one of the things I quote still to this day. Oh, here you go. I already know what it is. When I came here, I already knew how I was sitting at home. Let's talk about you and that big mouth. Who? Cool. This, this, this is New York this talking to you. Is? This is her talking to you when y'all was upstairs in, in the room. This is Look, this I is didn't forget all about uh -huh. you, me. <laughs> this, this is after she said, you're out of it. You're oh, out of when it. the girl said that she had um oh okay, okay. No, 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 this is you and her upstairs in no 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 yeah. this is this is this is the day of this is the day of y'all getting ready for the photo shoot and this is after you and her have that big blow up. I didn't and know she, she was a part of eliminations, but she lied. Yeah, oh yeah, she was lying to y'all. But this is once this is when she tells everybody to go back upstairs, y'all redo y'all selves, and you and her sit down on the bed and y'all are talking and looking at each other. And she's looking at you and she says, When I came, when I came here, I already knew who I was sitting home. Um, and she said something, let's talk about you and that big mouth of yours. Uh, but the 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 thing I remember the most that, that I say often, she was like, You're clicking. Oh you're yeah, clicking down. I like that. You're clicking. <laughs> oh my god um she tried to play but i'm gonna play my position bitch <laughs> you know what i noticed you and her never got into it after that yes we did i'm talking about like after she got back in the house i don't remember y'all getting getting into it again i don't remember at all hmm. maybe because she starts saying nice things because if you notice we went to the photo shoot mm -hmm. and she started fucking with crazy she started fucking with crazy she was like, oh, girl, I can't fuck with her. I think she knew what we knew, what Delicia said. She thinks she that bitch because that's his aesthetic. She saw that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think she had another moment of hoops and her standing there. Because mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie. I really thought it was gonna be crazy in New York. 
at the end. Really? Okay. Because she was too much doing it to him. I, so I thought, like the way I felt, you always in his face doing shit. And then when Delicious said you taking your drawers off and you doing all that, and then he asking me shit and I'm not doing it, bitch. You're doing stuff. People are doing like I just felt like you know, just mm, it was weird. Going was back too much. Going back to New York. Um, you guys have a shared date with Flav down to the vineyard. What do you remember most about the day of you guys riding on the horses and then I later... I my stake in her face and make my horse kick her off that horse. Because you was over her. You know what I will say? That people don't remember, but they need to. I don't like... I don't care if I'm dating a guy or what we're doing, even though it's a show. When he ran up behind her when she was crying and ran off because he was paying me mm -hmm. attention. And I said, what you chasing up behind her for? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, he left. He left you to go run after her. And did you see me walk up on him? I said, "So what you chasing her for?" Because I'm in my feelings or some shit. She said, mm -hmm. and you saw how I walked off. I don't give a fuck. So you, that's who you gonna be with. That's how I am in real life. I know that's right. Next on the list you is chose up, but you chose wrong. <laughs> would you have really stayed with Flav if he would have chose you? Mm -hmm. For real. Okay, hold on. Okay, wait, okay. Hold that thought. Next on the list is Delicious, the mm -hmm. the one who won. Mm-hmm. What's what's your thoughts? What's your, oh, what's your... my thoughts on Delicious? Uh, I think I think Delicious has a big booty. It's huge. I think she looks amazing. She looks fucking amazing. I think she looks amazing now. I'm talking about mm -hmm. now too. Mm -hmm. Um I'm glad she won over New York. Mm -hmm. I am happy because I ain't gonna lie. I thought this was gonna be the you know how New York didn't win the first time. I thought it was set up that she win because she was such a big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was shocked that Delicious won. Mm -hmm. I thought it was set up for New York to win. I thought there's no point in them bringing her back for her to fail again. Do you get what I mean? In my head, I felt like they're setting it up for her to come back so she could win and then she get her spinoff. Like, that's how, what I thought. I was shocked. I was or, shocked. now this is what I believe, just knowing about TV and all this other stuff. Um, And me and Delicious, I'm going to try to get Delicious here. Me and Delicious are really cool. Like, that's my girl. Like, I work for her. That's like my friend. I'm, I'm a, That's my friend. That's my buddy. We talk. That's my girl. Oh, uh, and I've never asked her about Flavor of Love, actually. But this is what I think. Really? No, I've never asked about it. Um, no, child, we can talk about other shit. I be wanting to know other stuff. <laughs> 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 um, to me, season two of Flavor of Love is to me one of the most well written reality TV shows that was never written. I mean, you have these iconic group of girls. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just gonna be frank: the black girls was not fucking off. Okay, the black girls was not playing no games that season. You had the shit with something shit in. You had, you know, just like the drama with y'all. You had the fan favorite New York come back to the show. Then all of a sudden, because, you know, this is around the time, too, that I think people also forget why people love these shows so much because reality TV was so new at that time. We at home really believed this shit that was on TV. Like, we thinking this shit is real fucking life. Um, it is. I mean, I mean, it is. It, it, like you say, it is. It is. Um, but like, I'm just saying, like, in terms of how it all came together, like, it's beautiful. Like, the girl that he didn't choose that everybody loves, New York became like a household name overnight from season one. She comes back. She gets surprisingly put back into the competition where everyone just assumes that her and Flav are going to get together just for him. While it is raining and lightning and thundering in Mexico for him to send her black ass home. And then they have a was big Puerto fight. Rico? Um, no, it was dangerous. I was pissed I, that they let her stay. And I'm what, gonna tell you why. What'd you say? I was pissed that they let her stay. Let who stay? New York. Because remember, she was just supposed to be visiting. Right. I was pissed because of this. I think there were two things. I felt like, because remember, I lived out there. Remember, I got eliminated because I wouldn't do nothing with him. Right. I was mad because my parents were packed up and ready to come to the house. That would have been such great TV to see oh, my damn. parents go at New York's parents. 
I because remember I was top three, but with mm -hmm. New York there, she made the top three. But I felt like us being top three, it should have been top three of the the new girls plus New York. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I felt like when I'm top three, but I wasn't because you guys ended up sending me home. And then you put her in my spot, basically, when it should have been because she's the guest and you want to see the drama. And because me and her already hit balls, you want to see my mom and her mom. Mm -hmm. Your mom would have said it all. Been, because think about it. The other moms weren't really saying anything. Your mom would have said it all. Imagine my mom, as y'all see her with Monique. Imagine. Oh, right. Imagine. I think that they, because they were packed up when I got home. Because remember, I got home that night. They were supposed to pick them up that morning the next morning so they had their bags at the door when i got home wow and so basically they should have had that happen for the ratings i'm telling you it would have been explosive i Ooh, think that girl that's what they messed up that's what they messed up it should have at least if you're gonna do top three you should have let that episode play out and then i go home right because you need to have that interaction with the parents. But I think they thought that Delicious and her mom would get into it, you know, with, uh, what, New York's mom. Mm -hmm. Um, But her, her mama, they, Delicious' parents was real cool. New York gets eliminated. The d Delicious, at least how they portrayed on the show, Delicious is like the good girl. You know, like, she's like the beautiful, big beauty, big booty black girl that was, like, kind of cool the whole time with everybody. Like, she wins, and then New York goes off and gets her spinoff, which then becomes, like, a big ratings draw for VH1. I'm just like, who in the, who in the reality TV heavens wrote this? Because, like, you can't find this shit nowhere else. Like, this is poetically beautiful. Um, Next on the list is Big Rick. Oh, Big Rick was always nice. Mm -hmm. He the one who picked me up in the middle of me running. You remember that behind this at the reunion? Yes. Uh huh. Was Big Rick y'all only security person inside of the house? Mm hmm. Y'all could have jumped Big Rick and been like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. If it was today's times, mm -hmm. oh, we would have, we could, because you know that we didn't know that they went home when we went to sleep. So imagine if I knew that. The producers. I, that's what they told me. They said we would go home and then come back. When the last person goes to sleep, we go home. The cameraman would go home. Everybody except for in the control room, I think there was one person. Like you said, if we wanted to, if we really were like them type of girl, if I would have known that, I probably would have jumped a couple of hoes. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know that. We thinking, you know, because we knew there was a control room. Mm -hmm. They did say there are people in there at all times, but... They probably fucking off doing whatever. Probably fucking each other. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, allegedly. Let me say. Yes. But um, really, like, they went home. They told me. I think one of the cameramen told me. I said because I think one morning they had came in. I said, "Where do you guys be at?" And they said, "We go home after the last person goes to sleep, and then we come back when they tell us to." And Before so y'all just thought they were staying in like other rooms in the house. Somebody. Like, in case something pops off, anything mm. can happen. The lights can blow the house up. You know, because <laughs> the lights are wired. What you guys don't know, there's wires everywhere on the floor. Mm -hmm. So, everywhere. like To, li to light the scene. Yeah, so, um, I guess for TV purposes, like, the lights in the house aren't going to do it. All those, the lighting, there mm. were so many lights that they put up themselves that you can't see. No, I can so believe it. Yeah, there's a lot of wiring on the ground that we had to mm -hmm. be careful about. So those could explode. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anything can happen in the middle of the night. They said there's always somebody in the control room. But from them telling me that, I think it would be like one person. Mm -hmm. But really, if we wanted to get down, if you notice some scenes that aren't... What scene was it? Because there's some scenes, if you watch the show closely, that you only see through the camera in the corner. That's because the cameramen are not there. Mm. So if you only see the camera in the corner, which it'll be grainy, you could tell it's not a cameraman, mm -hmm. then that's why, because they're not there. Makes sense. Makes sense. So we I think all of us thought somebody was there because I'm telling you, if one of us even had the thought, the inkling about it. Y'all would have fucked the people shit up. <laughs> we would have tore bitches up. And then all you would see is the camera from they would have had to scramble to get <laughs> security or come out and get us. I, matter of fact, I don't even know if it was Matt, but one of the producers came to, to grab me when I ran behind the stage. We didn't even have enough security for the reunion. They were not ready. They weren't. I know one of the producers, if you go back and look, you could tell he's a producer. He was not a security. 
tried to come and get me because they were so shocked. Like, oh my gosh. Yes. They okay. Ready. Next on the list, and you kind of touched on him earlier, but we're going to officially sink our teeth <laughs> in. <laughs> Flavor Flame himself. We made your motherfucking show. Flav really liked you. He 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 wanted you. He wanted you. He the whole ass bitch. He just want to fuck like all these other niggas. When's the last time you saw Flav? Let's see. Let's see. C probably a couple years ago at a event with Flo Rider. Oh, okay. Did y'all speak? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. This is before I found out about what he said. He spoke. Mm. Everything was chill. Everything was cool. No, like, like you see on the show, boots, this and that, all of that. So that's why once I heard about this, I'm very upset. Like you talking shit in my eyes, and I don't like that. I don't like nobody in my face that feels that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, I was one of the bitches who made your show. And you feel like he needs to respect you a whole lot more. Most definitely to put respect on my name. Like anybody and another thing i just hate the fact that people feel like when you raise your children like that that's not doing anything you know i don't like that oh they're not doing anything or they're not they don't know what the fuck i do i don't put my business out there but they have no clue but mm -hmm. don't ever disrespect me you know what i'm saying as a mother as an educated woman or whatever it is that i do you uplift every girl on this show because we made your show and that's how i feel about it like you don't diss anybody you don't discredit anybody especially not a bitch like me Let's keep it real. If I was not on that show, them bitches would have been ran from corner to corner. You wouldn't have most of those those <laughs> moments. You wouldn't. Charm School. I think Charm School was built off of me. Let's keep it real. What makes you, what makes you say that? And you know, I, I, I wasn't going to talk about Charm School today, but let's bring it up. Charm School was built off of me because if you think about it, uh, th first off, meshing season ones with season two. Mm -hmm. I think they came up with that idea because of the fact that I was so entertaining. It's like, you got the pumpkin, you got all these other girls that thought they was it on season one. There's all the talks of what's better season one, season two. So let's put them together. When you have outrageous people like pumpkins, remember, that's like one of the tops. I'm remember, I'm one of the tops. You have to put us together. It was meshed because of us. Because mm -hmm. remember, it's, it's labeled flavor, flavor of love girls, charm school. Mm -hmm. That's us. And the top girls. So this is like, and I know I'm one of them because I'm the, one of the stars. Like, no one can ever discredit what I did, no matter if I'm on TV now or not. Like, every scene, everything that I've said has still been said, you know, to this day. Carlos King quoted some things that I've said. Like, we are all iconic in my eyes. I feel like we're all sisters, no matter if I like them or not. I feel like this is like my college days with these mm -hmm. girls. I think that we deserve to have like a, um, I guess they call it a reboot, but kind of like how they do the housewives, but with us on a trip mm. and then let all the drama unfold. Because clearly talking to you today, the shit is still going on. Oh yeah. I think a couple of girls are cool, you know, but mm -hmm. uh -uh, there's some, there's some things that, that I feel should be recorded and we should make a, a pretty coin off of, you know, because at the end of the day, it's still iconic. Let's say that just for argument's sake, somebody did trump our ratings. At the end of the day, we were the first black show, any show, black, Asian, whatever, to trump in reality television, anybody else in the world. That is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. It is. It is. And a lot of people have made comments like, oh, it's not like y'all did something great. Who gives a fuck? We did do something great. We did something great for black people because we have other races respecting reality and taking our our um concepts and using them you know what i'm saying so i think that people need to put respect on every single one of our names every show that has an icon in it it needs to be the girls like me new york and different girls villains all of them they need to be in really doing their research on who's a real villain of reality who is a real icon of reality television and picking them and getting them and you moving to, forward you need to be on the next season of villains and traitors Hello, <laughs> bitch, girl. You know, no you Tino Shay, girl. No Tino Shay. I honestly do think if people I'll did set see, it off in that home. bitch, you will set it off in that home. I believe that. I'm a real, I'm a real vet. I'm a real villain. I'm a real freaking icon. You hear me? Like it's it. It's me. I feel like I established it. 
New York most definitely is, but let's let's keep it real. New York to me is a character. New York, like Tiffany is amazing. She's a very sweet girl. Very I love sweet. Tiffany. But let's keep it real. It's a me and New York are two different type of villains. I love New York. But then Booth coming into the house, I think I take it up notches. New York is a little safe now. You know, when I saw her <laughs> with Ray J and yelling when, when Jocelyn then was so down, I'm like, girl, you need to be cheering them hoes on. Bitch, be her ass. Mm-hmm. Bitch, get her. Like, <laughs> I want to be like, bitch, get her. Mm-hmm. I think, you but know, I think. We are I, different age range. Remember I said, yeah. I'm the youngest of the show, so I got to remember that. New York had, you know, she's a little bit older. All the girls are older than me. Um, I think that I can see, you know, she's just in a different a different phase in her life. And she didn't want the girls fighting. But baby, if it's gonna be villains, it's gonna be something to get cracky. <laughs> and I think, and I think, just from being around New York and talking to her, I think she really views what she does in reality TV as a job. You know, like mm-hmm. so it's to her, she's just going from job to job, getting her money, getting mm-hmm. her fee because she gonna get it. You know, y'all, they, they they gonna pay her her rate. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, girl, and I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say it all. Um, but she gonna get her money and she gonna go to the next job. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think I think I think the New York we first saw probably still had a little bit of inkling. Like I need to maybe you know perform or give more. But I definitely think the, the New York after season one of Flavor of Love was really like a representation of what she thought or felt people would want to see and would would get her the next job. If that makes sense. You think so? That's that's what I choose. Just from just from knowing New York, because I've like like I said, I've been around New York. I've talked to her. She is one of the sweetest people. And if you had never seen what she gives on reality TV, you would never know from talking to her one on one that that's how she give it up. Because she's like so sweet. She be talking about the Lord, and you know, like yes. yeah, like it's it's like to me, it's night and day, night and complete day. I don't think she, uh, because I feel like that's a follower. One thing I'll say, I don't look at New York as a follower, meaning like Mm -hmm. where she's doing things for television, should I say? Mm -hmm. I think she's more so like, like me. In person, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. But like when I show my kids certain things, they can say, oh yeah, that's mommy because mommy would go off. But they know that's with they they daddy or somebody I don't like. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Now, how did daddy get in? And he said, I was somewhere chilling. That's where they see that. So it's like, (laughs) but but if I like you, Mm -hmm. I'm a Scorpio. So we either really like you or we really don't like you. Like, there's no middle. So, like, if I don't like you, you're going to know I I really don't like you. And so that's just I should have known you were Scorpio. I'm an Aquarius. And from my history... Me and me and Scorpios in my life historically have always had the most beautiful um partnerships where mm-hmm. there's a side of me, which is usually in my past collabs or relationships or partnerships with or friendships with Scorpios. I'm more of like the thinker, the creativity, the brains, mm-hmm. while the Scorpio is always like the mouth, the energy, the let's oh, go do it, let's go get it. Spooky. Yeah, but like, but like me and Scorpios from my history, like when it's good, it is the most beautiful thing in this world. But when me and Scorpio ain't ain't on it, bitch, they be on my ass. They be like, girl, they be getting at it. I love, I love Scorpios when they love me. But when they don't like me, bitch, I'm like, girl, I don't want no smoke. I'm sorry. Let me move the fuck out the way. Cause we we don't like getting mistreated. We don't Mm-mm. like nobody trying to play us. You know, so I think people misconstrue, you know, but mm-hmm. we do go we go overboard because we like we gonna let that person know you did wrong. You're not about Bitch. to play. And you're gonna feel it. To <laughs> um the last the the last name on the roll call sheet I wanna ask you about is the production company, which you talked on here and there. So I'm gonna ask you some real fast questions. Did you ever feel mistreated by production? Never. I love that. Um, did you, did you ever feel, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, baby. I was just going to say I had, um, I guess I don't know if I should talk about that, but because it doesn't have anything to do with it, but the production, they love me. Like, look, he's like, <laughs> okay, I can say it. Fuck you. So, I did an interview with, um, Lacey from Rock of Love. She has a podcast and yes. I guess it ended up in the shade room. I, I never have intentions of anything like that. Some people feel like it's all scripted. Like I made that happen, but it's not. I'm just that bitch. But 
I guess I just say a lot of shocking things, right? So I'm completely electrocuted over here. I just want you to know. <laughs> so once we got on there, I guess Lacey did an interview right after with the production. I forgot who it was. It was either Mark or Chris. So it's Mark and Chris. So mm -hmm. Mark, you met, and Chris were the two who um, basically did our show. And they did an interview, and Monique tried to told her to take it down because they were agreeing with me. They were saying Boots ain't lying. She did this. She did that. Monique threatened them. She told them take that shit down. Allegedly, take that shit down. Did it. She was hot because Lacey told me. And Lacey said Boots was Wait, is, 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 is this news? I think so. No, I'm saying like, has this ever been said before what you're saying? I don't I've know. Never... I don't think so. Okay, let me not stop you. Because I'm I like, yeah. I, I think when it happened, people saw it, but it wasn't said. No. But but people kept adding me like, she did this. Monique is hot. Lacey let me know, look, she wants us to take this down. She's threatening to sue us. She's threatening to do this. Because they were basically saying, reiterating things that I were saying, I was saying was absolutely true. And I guess she didn't like that. There needs to be a conversation with me and Monique, too. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, I don't know if that was Mark. But it was Mark or Chris, one of them, who did it, who was basically just keeping it real. You know, people don't like like when you keep it real. But he was keeping it real. And production I've never had an issue with. They've always loved me. I loved them. They never crossed me. Mm -hmm. When people say editing... Of course, the shows are edited. And when I say editing for a storyline, it's more so like if the story is going towards like when the guys, rappers came to the house, if the story's going more to the biggest thing was crazy not knowing the show and then Boots said this, they're going to cut out everything else. You know, so that's the type of editing I'm talking about. Anything that I've done has been on camera. I will never deny what I've done. So when I see reality shows now, I can't relate to when they say, I never said that. Because some people say they'll say something about somebody else and edit it that way. But that's yeah. never been done with me. So um, I've always been treated treated right. I think the I only that. thing that I had an issue with was them wanting me to do the other show when they gave Real and Chance their show after one season. I didn't like that. You're not going to use me anymore. And that's when I got burnt out of... Out of um, out of the whole reality shit, I felt like y'all now y'all trying to use people and not give them their just dues. And I didn't like it. And that's that's the only gripe that I had. Um, but they can make it up. Chris and I Mark. know that's right. Yes. Um, again, I was not gonna talk about charm school, but you just brought up Monique, who you guys have had a long standing um and still I, do. What would you say to Monique in in y'all's conversation if you ever have one? Why are you expecting things from people that you are not willing to do yourself? You are expecting Oprah and Tyler to apologize to you and you have not apologized to me. Publicly. Everything that she is going through is the exact thing that I went through. Everybody felt like Monique was that bitch because that was the year she hosted the BET Awards. So she felt like she was above us because she was hosting the BET Awards that and this. But see how you treat people like shit? And now you got somebody above you, Oprah and Tyler, and how they doing you. Let's say they are doing you wrong. I don't give a fuck. Because you got to look at what you did to other people that you felt were below you. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the same thing. So why should anybody feel sorry? And them dumbass people feeling sorry and saying all these things about black women is fucking stupid. And I will say this, because some people, I've told my cousins and stuff this, you know, another reason why I backed out of it was because when Charm School came out, I didn't appreciate the comment about we're a disgrace to black people when there's white and Asians on our show. We're not a disgrace to black women. And a lot of black women agreed. And that's why I don't fuck with a lot of shit going on. And that's why I left reality, too. I felt like they don't appreciate what the fuck we brought. And then next thing you know, these same black ass women want a reality show. These same black ass women want to be on Housewives. These same black ass women want to do certain things that we did. but. But don't want to acknowledge that that's the same thing. Contradicting themselves and their arguments. So that pisses me off. And they don't stick up for what we built. But then they want to copy what we built, do other reality shows. If it wasn't for our show, we don't know how Black people would maneuver in reality at all. Mm. You know? And 
even now, I will say this. I still don't even think they give New York her just dues, if we keep it real. All these years, a lot of us have not been on the shows we should have been on, including New York. And I'm glad that she's getting what she's getting now. But I still feel like they still skimping. They don't treat, you know, any of us, even her, when she's on these shows. I just don't see them treating her like, you know, we started it like she started it, like she's the HBIC or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. her brand is. I don't see the respect. I love that you speak like that, Larissa. Mm -hmm. Larissa for president, everybody. <laughs> I just, I just don't. I think now, and you know, it's funny because before, you know, New York was doing all these things. Everybody was saying, Nene, you know, I love Nene. Let me mm -hmm. say that. Nene is the biggest and, and she's the first this black woman to that. They forgot about New York. And I tell people that's people why did. I said. People did for a little yes. second. They forgot yes. about her. But I tell people, even with me, they will say, oh, you're not a star. You're not this. It doesn't matter if a million people said that. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm a star. I know I'm an icon because I can stand on everything. I don't go off of what people think of me. I know what I built. And I was a big part of building that. I don't care what nobody says. If I wasn't on Charm School, it wouldn't have been shit. If I wasn't on uh, Flavor Love, it wouldn't have been shit. It wouldn't have. It would have been just a couple of followers listening to New York. It would have been the way they wanted it to be, but it, it was a twist with me. And now you're in the mix with Twix telling it all, bitch. Okay. <laughs> you need to find out. You need to find out how you can extract your confidence and place it in a bottle and call it Larissa's lotion because okay. your confidence. That I'm absolutely in awe and full respect of is like out of this fucking world. Now you can't be press secretary. Like we don't need you getting up talking, like getting in front of the cameras on the podium delivering nothing. No, no, bitch, you can't do none of that. You could be president, vice president. You cannot be press secretary. <laughs> no, because no, uh, 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 not at all. Girl, you got the roll call. <laughs> Oh, um, is that everybody? Look, that is everybody. Let me do a quick little run through of my questions because a lot of them you asked while we was doing roll call. Um, da, 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 I don't want to ask that. I don't want to ask that. Uh, oh, I do want to ask that. Um, what is I actually think I can fast forward straight to the to the reunion, but I do want to ask you this. I feel like for me watching the show and I've rewatched the show so many times throughout the years, you are like, I won't say known for, but one of the things you are known for is bending over, shaking your ass, right? And like doing that little thing you used to do. Was Why I the first twerker before twerking was here? <laughs> let's think about it. Shit, I don't hmm. know. I was too young. I wasn't looking at no booty. I, I definitely wasn't looking at no girl oh, shaking no, that no booty. That was a big thing. For real. I love it. Larissa, you and Social need to link up, bitch. Y'all really do. <laughs> Y'all need to. But I'm going back to the day when Flav brought all his friends over. Why mm -hmm. do you feel so comfortable doing that dance move in front of the guys? Let me think back, because I really don't know. Let me think. I, I would probably guess what my mindset was. Mm -hmm. Was these is a bunch of niggas. They want to see some ass. We all in the house. It's a lot of girls. What are they here for? So let's mm -hmm. go on and twerk. Fuck it. Back then, I don't. Even, we didn't even call it twerking. What y'all called it back then? Booty shake. I don't know. Shaking our ass. Cause remember, I kept saying I'll shake my motherfucking ass when I want to shake my. Shake my motherfucking ass, bitch. That's such that's that's such a a, a model to live by. I'm gonna shake my motherfucking ass when I want to shake. And a lot of people use when I said, "Well, bitch, if I'm a hoe, I'll be a top dollar hoe." When she told me, mm -hmm. "I think you're a hoe." Bitch. She was like a dick, but let's go on. Oh my god, let's go to the reunion. <laughs> Did you make contact with New York when you ran backstage? I will say. Oh, I Larissa, don't get shy on me now. It's not shy. I'm not sure, but what I will oh, say, oh, that's respectful. It was a lot of security standing there. All I remember was once I got back there, I'm swinging because I knew she was back there. But I do remember they pent me up, but it was security. So they had, so she was just saying, I think she was saying something like, yeah, bitch, or something. But that's because security grabbed me. But I know when I ran back there, I was just swinging. 
So I don't Bitch, know if I hit her or the security, but I do know after the reunion, Flav came outside because they called the cops on us. Who? This I don't I don't know if it's production, but somebody called the cops and we had to rush out. So after that happened and we I came back and all the girls were out, we got outside. I remember standing outside. Flav came out. It was me and like two, three other girls standing there, maybe five of us. And Flav said, Boots, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what the fuck you mean what happened we fucked your shit up he said New York is crying and I said she's crying why is she crying so from what he told me she was back there crying that's why I say I don't know cause all I know I'm just swinging <laughs> security grabbed me puts me up so I could have and then they put me you know help him me up I said alright all right, Jody. Look, I love Bay Boy. <laughs> I get down. We run to the run to the out the building. We hear cop cars. We're like, oh my gosh, they call the cop. I think Flav said that too. So we like, bitch, we gotta go to the hotel. Let's go. We laughing. Flav tells us that the girls know. If you ask the other girls, they said he sure did. He said she's crying. I said she's crying. That's the last thing I would ever think she was doing. But he was like, yes. What happened? I'm like, what do you mean? What? <laughs> I'm assuming you guys were so upset with New York because of the things y'all saw she say about y'all in her interviews once the show aired and y'all was able to get into all the shit that she was talking on the show. I'm assuming that's why y'all were so mad at her, right? I felt like I was really mad. Now, I do. I felt like I was mad from the gate because she kept saying, boots pick a wall. And if you, if you're, that basically means you want to fight. So let, I picked them all. So what are we doing? <laughs> so... After that, I pick them all. What are we doing? Like, so, when did you when did you back me into a wall? When did you? Because I want to see you do it. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see it right here, live on camera. <laughs> oh, that's what I said. You I just mad. You just mad because I said. You just mad because I said. You just a friend and fighting just don't fuck you and you ain't gonna get picked. <laughs> I forgot I said that. I know Delicious had a right to punch her too because she was talking about her mom. Did Delicious make contact with her? Remember, she couldn't get... They were grabbing her. That's how I was able to get through at one point. Bitch, when I say you ran the fuck through... <laughs> bitch, you ran. That's what I'm saying, though. I am the entertainment. You understand me? They need to do a show with me in New York. Fuck it. Speak it. Claim it. Receive because it. Because at the end of the day, think about that. What girl have you known on the show who gets all the attention majority let's say i didn't win any of these shows charm school flavor of love only thing they kept talking about flavor of love who's ran back there oh my gosh charm school it was you and what you, happened you, with monique and them you and monique bitch yeah that was like that was like the thing i because I'm, I'm thinking back to again i'm a child we watching this ain't nobody give a fuck about safari but it that got their money that's cool. We wanted to know about you and Bucky, and we wanted to know about you and Monique. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? We want to know. Is this going to be resolved by the time we get down to the last 60 seconds? Because back then, that's when they wasn't doing part one, part two reunions. They wasn't doing no shit like that. All that shit had to fit in one little hour. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted to know. You, Larissa, I can see the argument. I ain't gonna lie. I can see the argument. I can see the argument. With what? With what you, like, with you saying that you are like one of the top girls arguably behind New York when it comes to Flavor of Love. I can see the argument. I can. Absolutely. I can see it. I can see it. What are some moments from the show you wish would have made it to air? Uh, I think most of the main ones, but I think the most thing I would want, not from the show, but the reunion when I told you the shit was crazy and that all that shit behind the scenes. I wish that all that was done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had cell phones like we did back then. I can't believe I'm saying this because that was so long ago. But if we had cell phones like we do now, I guarantee you somebody would have had that footage. Jesus. Because it was three girls. Matter of fact, the other girl, I forgot who it was, but it was one of them that we don't remember. It was either the Tiger Girl or the Wire Girl. I, I might have been the Tiger Girl, but she was just quiet, standing there in shock while I'm choking crazy. Spunky was standing there scared as fuck. Like Shay about to get me, Bucky about to about to get me, and I'm just choking the fuck out of crazy. While she's oh my, God. Out. oh my Jesus! 
Oh my god, I'm not supposed to laugh for that. <laughs> and I think I think we ran to delicious after we. I think we had to wait till after to tell her what the fuck happened. But I kept asking Bucky, "What the fuck was you doing? Like what?" The... But I think that's the only thing you I wish would have been exciting, and maybe a little bit more. But I I think it's because they didn't expect this. So I'll mm. say that. Uh, but a little bit more of what happened backstage because, like I said, I'm swinging. They, I guess, the cameras just weren't ready for that angle to for everyone. To that see, makes sense. Yeah, to see what actually happened. So I wish that maybe that would be it too. Those two, mm -hmm. because you can't see. But I ain't gonna lie. They know how to do TV because if you look at how the show go, you see me run backstage and go doom, and then they cut the scene. So everybody mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh! Da -da -da. All they remember was boots. Think about that. If that never happened. Y'all wouldn't even have none of that mystery. None of that mystery. You get what I mean? Like, come on. What girl is doing these things? Boots? What is we talking about? <laughs> what is we? I'm the first icon. Let's keep it real that did that. Then it was Jocelyn when she ran. Mm -hmm. And everybody. Let's keep mm -hmm. it real. Like, she a Scorpio too. We Jesus. get down. You hear me? When we get oh mad, God. we get down. But that's what I'm saying. They don't, they don't see, they see it, but it's like, I think they wait. Like, okay, if she get on this and she pop, then we're going to give her credit. Like New York. Why it take y'all all these new shows? We don't have to prove ourselves. You know what I mean? But it seemed like, I don't like that. Especially with New York having her own show on a reputable company and, and network like VH1 and 51 Minds, that was our production company. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we should not have to do any of these things. Damn. Especially not her. To be doing when she had her own show and things like that. So, yeah, yeah I just think that they need to investigate. I don't know how they pick their cast, but they need to figure out who the real villains are. Who the real villains? Who the... Uh, I, don't, I haven't watched Traitors, but I'm interested in that. Well, you should watch it. Everybody talking about I'm it. I'm gonna start watching it. Yeah, but um, yeah. I want to know how has the show changed your life? Oh my gosh, I tell people all the time because they always say like, "Oh, do people recognize you?" And then I will say it's changed it. But like I said, I just feel like I don't want to say it's in a bad way, but sometimes we don't want to be bothered. And I did see an interview with. Jason Lee and Tiffany and or New York and I know I could relate to some things that she stated which was you know we would rather live regular lives and the reason I know fans want to see us but I get it because I think that we now maybe feel unappreciative appreciated like mm -hmm. it's like you don't we don't get what we already done and established I feel like even when we move forward you have this whole younger crowd who has to actually go back and watch, you know, to understand our impact. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these networks like BET and them, they all know what we've done, but what are they doing? But Nothing. I don't, I feel like the reason why it's hard for people now to understand the impact who necessarily probably didn't see it around that time or they weren't old enough or for whatever reason is because they just weren't in that time where you didn't have a lot of social media. There was no Instagram. There was no Twitter. There was no shade room. There was no there was no neighborhood talk. It was TMZ, bitch. That's what it was. It was it TMZ. Sure was. Um, and the magazines, the Ebony's, the Jets, the People, those magazines. And double so you XL. double XL, XL King. You had to go to specific places in order to watch the people you wanted to watch. You just can pick up your phone and watch them go live on Instagram mm -hmm. or YouTube or whatever platform. You couldn't go to a place outside of your home or your personal network and talk about these things as you can now with Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all these different things. And so I think with the source of entertainment at that time being so specific is why there was such a huge draw to it. Does that make sense? It was like, it was almost like a, um, I won't say a, a rarity, but it was like you had to watch this on VH1 because you couldn't get it nowhere else. And yeah, no reruns unless they replayed. There was no reruns. There were no reruns. So unless you had a VCR that could record it on a tape and you rewatched it yourself and just had a bunch of tapes that you was just scheduling to 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 um rewatch it, 
you had to be at your house on Sunday night, and I believe it came Ooh. on at nine Monday? or eight. Mondays or Sundays, one of those. It, I'm leaning more. To, it might maybe, be Monday because people would come home from school. Yeah. Okay. You what? Whatever. Yeah. You know what? You it is Monday because Flame Love would be Monday. Um, and then at the time, America Idol would be Tuesday, Wednesday, and I think Top Model mm -hmm. used to be either Wednesday or Thursday. I used to watch all this shit mm -hmm. as a child. Um, the, hence why I'm talking about this shit now as an adult because I watched all this shit as a child. Um, but you had to be home in order to watch this. You couldn't rewatch it. You couldn't see a clip. Um, and it was a moment. You know, us sitting there every week trying to see bitch who finna go home. What's gonna happen? Who finna snitch on who? What mm -hmm. team finna come out about this person? Who coming back? Is New York really finna win? Bitch, she knocking Bucky going home because she didn't hit this girl and all this other stuff. It was, it was a, uh, it was the ghetto hip hop soap opera that we all loved. Mm hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a good way of putting it. Mm. <laughs> and a good mixture. I feel like the production company did a great job with casting because we were all different. Yeah, we were, we were all different. So tell me, what are you doing now in 2024? Um, I'll tell you, girl. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. Girl, the last thing I saw of you, and this is not, please don't, please, this is no way to discredit anything you're doing. Please, please, please I do want to say that. There's no way to discredit what you're doing. And that's why I'm asking, because I want to know. But the last time I saw you, girl, you was cussing Claudia Jordan ass the fuck out. What yeah, are you doing? That's bitch, Claudia, the colorist Claudia. Y'all don't fuck with that bitch. Because she, she, she a colorist herself. She don't like black people. Let me put this in here too. She don't like black people because her daddy wasn't a good a good dad to herself. So she want to bring up people's kids. Cause she tried to bring up my kids with something that it had nothing to do with our, our argument. So let's bring up your black daddy that you don't, that's why you don't like black people, bitch. Where your daddy at? But anywho, she a hating ass bitch. Because and this and this all started with Monique. So I don't know if you want to clip this in there, but. This is this is how she came to be because she's when you're hot and popping, she's that bitch that'll come along hating because she's not us. You know, she was never that girl. Like I told her at the end of the day, she came out of nowhere trying to defend Monique and said I was some ghetto hood rat on, on this BET special when I was on BET on a special that they asked me to be on. And her jealous ass, I've never known her to do anything but stand there. She going to say, oh, ain't you the contestant for Flavor Love? I said, no, bitch, you're the contestant. That was standing there with 50 other models holding up numbers on deal or no deal. Let's remember that. That was that's now hating, trying to stick it for Monique, who didn't even fucking plug you with shit. Cause that's why you only got a Fox sh Soul show after sucking all this dick allegedly all these motherfucking years. But and now you an old ass granny in your 50s. <laughs> what Nene say to uh <laughs> looking like Casper the Ghost? Remember she said that? She said, <laughs> for 50 years, sucking dick. Larissa, and ain't got nowhere. But anywho, Larissa, that's Larissa, how that came to You don't give a fuck. You don't give I a don't. fuck. Because I told Claudia, because she when she started talking about my kids, I said, bitch, I'll beat your ass. Because now you're bringing up some shit. She was just waiting for me to have kids so she could just plug some shit in and make me mad. I said, bitch, we can meet up and I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. Don't bring my kids up. And she's going to say, oh, who's wants to beat me up? People said I shouldn't have brought her kids up. Da, da, da. Yeah, I will. Because I you, don't like that shit. She said she was going to sue me. You know, I'm the type of person, and I practice this with any and everybody. Bitch, if I wasn't there to see it or witness it, I cannot pick a side. I can just listen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I've worked with Claudia at Fox Soul on the Turns Out with T.S. Madison show where I was um, EP and editor, right? Um, And I hear all these things that people say about Claudia. Like, people read Claudia the fuck down. And I just be standing there looking like Claudia was so nice. Like she was so cool. It is, I won't say it's hard for me to fathom because you know, people show up differently to other people. And bitch, I'm not getting into nobody's beef because I don't want none. Child, I be having my own. Listen, I don't want no smoke. But it just be so mind-boggling to me when I hear people read Claudia down and I work for her personally. I'm like, who is this woman y'all speak of? Who is let she? Let me tell you what I tell people. If you are on a show, right, and you're on the number one show popping, everybody's celebrating you, and this one person you don't even know starts talking shit on a public platform, would you be nice to them? Or would you call them out and say, that wasn't cool? Because that's how I originally approached. And I told her, I, she came in my DMs trying to get slick at her mouth. 
and tried to say, I got slick. Bitch, no, you came in my DMs acting funny, bitch. And that's what happened. So you're going to get checked. And she started talking shit and I started talking shit. But see, what she should have done was apologize for what she said because she does not know me. And I tell everybody, that's with anyone. If you don't know me, why are you on there talking about I'm a ghetto hood rat, I'm this and that? She always makes comments on brown skin women. I don't know about men, but I know for women, she has made those comments. And I have an issue with her attacking me. And then when I say something, it's, oh, I'm going to call the cops because Larissa said this. But I said that because you brought up my children who have weren't even born during our beef. Do you understand what I'm saying? She's doing it to taunt me and to get me to hurt her so she can have me in, in jail. And she has a colorist mindset because she does these things and she talks about black women like she's pure white, forgetting that she's biracial. I don't like those type of women because then she get mad when people say you're not black because you're biracial. And then you talk about black women like, like we're just ghetto. Like we was talking about... Um, the H-Town girl, that's what she reminds me of. You say, like when she said, this, this is the streets of Compton, that's the type of shit that Claudia says. And if you are half black, you need to start representing black women. You know what I'm saying? And I don't see that in her. And when she attacked me, I attacked her. Me and her can do a conversation, but she's too scared to because she don't want to get called out. And she don't want to get popped. Oh my God, no, don't hit Claudia. Jesus, please. No, oh no. You know she a cop caller. She need to be very careful with her words though because I'm the type where I don't have a record, baby. <laughs> and oh it'll stay that way. It'll stay that way. Whether she got popped or not. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, no, I don't want yeah. nobody to get popped. I just nobody. don't like, so to in the cap that, mm -hmm. my thing with Claudia is she should have been a woman enough to apologize and say, you know what? I did do that because you was popping and hiding. I was your jealous ass bitch because that's all it was. I don't know that lady. I've never met her. Ever in my life, ever. So it's like, why did you come out your mouth saying that? And then I found out her and Monique were friends. So you see why I'm already on 10, like, oh, so you doing that for back then, or now they call it clout. So I guess back then you were doing it for clout. That's what you was doing? Like, oh, Larissa's popping, her and Monique going at it. And for what? But you don't want to apologize, but you want me to treat you a certain way. No, I'm going to clown you every chance that I get. Because oh that was God. out of pocket, it was wrong. If she ever, like in the DM, she could have just apologized. It would have been over. It's always just when when I hear people read Claudia, I just be like, "Girl, who was this woman?" You know, you know. And I told and I told her this too. And I and, cause, and I'm gonna say this publicly. I told her this too. I was like, you know, watching on TV on Housewives, you would think like like you know, I walked in thinking she was gonna be away. But, like, from the moments I saw her in person to even over the phone, working digitally, even, like, till to this day, sometimes we'll talk and we'll have, like, really in-depth conversations. Um, I'm just always, like, who was this woman they talk about, you know? Like, mm. you know? And, and and in no way, shape, or form, because I know people watching, like, oh, you just sticking up for Claudia, that's your friend. No, I'm, I'm not sticking up for nobody, because I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what was said. I was not in that DM. I don't know what she did back then. I wasn't probably even old enough to even know about it. And Larissa's experiences and how oh, she yeah, expresses the them are was, valid. It was, a DM was, was not recent, but it was about two, three years ago. Yeah, I, yeah I thought... So even mm -hmm. when I saw some of that, I didn't really get into it because I'm like, girl, I don't know what the fuck they talking about. I just saw you like in modern times going off. And I was like, what's she talking about? What's going on? I was like, ooh, shit. You know uh -uh. Funny? A lot of people, she was like, oh, you saved those messages. See, she thought I didn't save them because the messages were a couple of years previous from that. But my point was I saved shit because see how bitches try to play? What, how it started again was she tried to say, I don't even know who that girl is. Why are you even mentioning me having your corny friend say some shit on the side? Now I'm about to blast you. And I got something for your ass because you keep bringing me up acting like I'm nothing, bitch. I've done a lot. And that's what I, that's the type of behavior I'm talking about. When bitches like her come on and, and the world that we're in now, like I said, they're followers. So they'll say, oh, yeah, she has it. She's not relevant. So we're going to copy what this person said. No, bitch. I'm relevant from way back in the day. And no one gives a fuck about what she's doing because in my eyes, you ain't relevant. Your little whack ass shit you got going on is not impressive to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like it's not, it's not impressive to me at all. Like she acting like she Oprah or something. Like, girl, come on. You're not doing nothing that I feel the way you say your resume is. She talk, she gonna tell me in the DM, oh, I've done a hundred movies. Bitch, Tubi, get the fuck out of here. Like you have never been in no. Like, she literally tried to throw her little, say she did this and she did that. Girl, you have done nothing in my eyes. Nothing. Like, it's not impressive. 
But my problem with her is why are you trying to compete with me in your eyes or whatever you're trying to do? What are you doing all this for? You know what I'm saying? You don't know me. You never tried to get to know me. But now I'm going to give you something. But you bringing up my kids has nothing to do with this situation. And then you're going to say you're going to call the cops on me for what? Because you want to see a black woman in jail. So you could say, oh, she's black. Look, she went to jail and hit me and she got kids. That's how that's the games that she plays. And I don't like women like that. She don't like black girls, period. She don't. It is, it is, my, it is, my, it is my hope and prayer, truly, Ooh. that the world gets to see the Claudia that I see. <laughs> Tell her to do what Monique need to do. Apologize to everybody she did wrong. I bet you she won't. Oh, my God. Um, I, <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know what Listen, listen, listen. Because I ain't cut none of this shit out. I ain't going to put this out. I ain't cut none of this shit out. Listen, this is your moment. This is your moment. I, I don't like editing people. It's whatever the fuck you say, but I know she's going to text me. I know I know it's going to come up. Well, instead of texting you, let her know, Claudia, while you're watching, hit me up. We can have, look, why don't you have me and Claudia on a private lunch date? <laughs> I, I don't want to be a witness to shit. I don't want to be a witness. As long as she behaves, we'll be fine. We can have a, we can have a civil grown-up conversation. You know, but see, this is what I don't like about wait, Claudia. wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop you right there, and then okay. I want to get back. I want to, I want to get back to talking about you. So you mean to say, out of all the people you have talked about today, out of all the people, this is the first time I've heard you say this. You would be willing to sit down and talk to Claudia civilly and and, and work it all out. I could do that with anybody. Well, you said Shay ain't no ain't no I'm chance. Talking about Claudia, because the other girls we've had, they know who I am. Do you get what mm -hmm. I mean? Claudia doesn't know who I am. She put a stereotype on me that she wanted, and I want her to understand. And this is what I don't like about her that I was gonna say. I feel like when you talk to her, she's gonna say all the stereotypical things. Why am I gonna meet up with her? So she could punch me in the face. So she could, she has these black stereotype things in her head that she think that I would do to her. Yes, I said certain things, but you need to apologize for talking about my child because that had nothing to do. You understand what I'm saying? She needs to realize what she said and why I said what I said. And if she came as a woman to say, hey, you know what? I didn't like that you did this and this and this, but I will agree that I said what I said because she can't say I did something to her. I didn't know this lady. So when we start from the beginning on, we can both talk about it, but I guarantee you she doesn't have the balls to. She talks, but we'll see. You let me know. You let me know. <laughs> let nobody know. She does. No, if she wants to link up, if she feels safe with you, she can link up with you. <laughs> so we all can have a lunch date. Look, you like, we all can have a lunch date. See, but she knows. I think she, she likes to play those games. You know, some people I notice in this new reality world, they say a lot of shit on the internet and they do a lot of shit, but in real life, they really want to pop a grape. I think that's that's Claudia. So I think that's why she feels, well, she feels my energy. And I think that's why she's scared. Like, well, I don't want to meet up with her because she's going to punch me. That's what she feels. Oh you know? But that's because she knows the little fucked up shit she didn't say for no reason. I don't know this lady. She shouldn't even be calling me any type of names when you don't know me personally. Like, that's dumb. She's too old for that. So the invitation is out. She's either going to take it or she needs to just keep her mouth closed. But remember, know who your daddy is. Get to get to know, embrace your black side. And then we can go from there. But please stop putting, you know, the issues you have with your black father on black women. No, what is Larissa doing in 2024? I want to hear about like all these amazing things that like you've mentioned, like you've done. I want to, I want to know about it. And I think people should know about it. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, I don't fuck with a lot of people. So this is what I will say. I've been seeking God and I've been doing that for a while, but I've been learning new things. And this is what I mean by seeking, really seeking God, not just saying things. And I've learned new things. I've learned that there are monitoring spirits and there are people that you do not tell everybody what you are doing mm -hmm. because they will prey on your downfall. They do certain things. You have pieces, people that will do curses. They will do hexes. They will do all types of things and you never tell them. But let's just say Larissa has a lot of things in the works. I am very educated. Like I told you, I'm working on a couple of things that mm -hmm. I'm very excited about. Now, as far as the entertainment industry, I am raising my kids. My kids are old enough now where I'm comfortable enough to do other shows. Mm -hmm. So if they are interested, you know, we'll see what they're talking about. But so I'm open to new shows, but it has to be worth it. Concept, 
you know, match my brand and who I am in reality television. And I think it would go great. I think you on anything right now is would be great, you know, because whether you agree with it or not, one, it's funny as fuck and you don't give a fuck. <laughs> you don't give a fuck, you know? You don't give a fuck. And those are some of the best people on reality TV. Like, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck who holding the camera, who bought the camera, who in charge of the camera, who behind the camera. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say it. You know? You know I, who I love that reminds me of myself? Who? Tammy Rowan. Tammy don't give a fuck. I love Tammy. Tammy oh, I love Tammy. Fuck. She don't. She don't. And she will check somebody real quick. Mm -hmm. I love her. What so, is it? When when people talk about this iconic persona, Boots, Larissa, what is it that you want people to always know when they speak your name, when they look back on your career in reality TV and what you have contributed? What is it that you want people to know and feel when they think about you and discuss you? I want people to know that nobody has ha ever hit the status of what Boots has hit, meaning iconic status there's only a few people who are in that realm so put respect on the name and also understand that there are very little people who keep it real like boots very little there's a lot of people like i said put on the character act where they are not themselves i am totally me just a di different version so yeah boots is iconic and many people cannot say that they can try to say they're iconic but they're not and <laughs> You know, being <laughs> iconic, being iconic entails being able to have your stuff quoted decades later. It will be 20 years. Can you believe that? Flavor wow. of Love aired in 2026. Wow. It'll be 20 years. Wow. And, you know, I just want people to understand, like, when it comes to reality, just like with movies, there's classic movies. Sometimes those A-list actors aren't working anymore because they don't want to. They're retired. Think of us the same. Put re put respect on our name the same. If you want us on certain shows, fight for us to be on those shows like you do everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, hit those casting directors up. Do what you, you know, want us to do. Because sometimes, like I said, when I agree with Tiffany is, sometimes we be feeling like, you know, people took advantage of us. People don't appreciate us. And we feel like, shit, we'd rather just live our life and keep it pushing and live a great life. You know, mm -hmm. so if our fans... You know, especially mine, if they want to see me doing things, you know, I hope it would be the right shows. Not something that I feel would be lower than what I've done, but I would love to do something on the E! Channel. I would love to do something on VH1, MTV, Viacom. Yeah. If you were standing in front of Flavor Flav right now, what would you say to him? Bitch, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> How, How dare you? you? How dare you? Boots, boots, man. I'm sorry, man. I don't know. He would even say that. See, and that's another thing. I started looking at people crazy because it's like, I think it depends on who we around too. And that's what I don't like. That's what I mean by the fake shit. Me, I'm going to say the shit regardless of who I'm around. I'm going to say how I feel like you fake as fuck. Mm. Like, I just don't like that because, and another thing, it was publicly said. So publicly, he would have to publicly fuck all that other shit. You would have to publicly retract that shit. Like, a lot of us are real mothers. Like, some people will call that shade, but just because he didn't raise his kids, that's the truth. I raised my three children. I was married. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a baby mama. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? People don't know that, but I was married. Like, I don't play those type of games with these niggas out here. They ain't just nothing in me having kids. <laughs> <laughs> Boots, is that is that anything else you want to contribute to, to this Twix exclusive on Flavor of Love season two? I think I honestly, girl, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I have done over 150 top model chats, and probably at this point, maybe close to over 200 chats on a whole about reality TV. This definitely goes up in my top five of all time, hands the fuck down. I didn't have to ask you shit. Well, let me end it like this. I want to say all the, like I said, at the, at the, I love all the girls, regardless of our status. 
I never wish anything, anybody, you know, any bad intention. I want everybody to succeed. I feel we all are icons. I feel we all need to stand in that. And that, and when people think it's shade, it's not that. It's just stand in that iconic position and take nothing less. You know what I'm saying? If you do see me on another show, it's going to be that. It's going to be that. You're going to feel the iconic status because that's what I exude. And so all the girls, I love them. We are icons. I, I love to see the girls doing things, even if I don't fuck with you. Um, just be the best. And I feel like, you know, everybody, I've seen our shows on, what, Netflix and different apps. Keep watching. All the, all the little kids or people who were little kids, like, were just born and, like, during that time or whatever, go back and watch Flavor Love Season 2 or watch Season 1, then Season 2. You know? See this, because I'm, I'm sure you guys don't get royalties from that show when they, like, replay no. and, and stuff like that. Like, a lot of reality TV stars, we don't. Um, But how much money did you get paid for doing Flavor of Love? So, Flavor of Love, from what I remember, I think it was, like, uh, I want to say a hundred a day. I'm not sure, but we were. All, he picked. He picked delicious in three weeks. So three and a half mm. weeks because I left two to three days before he picked her. That's how mm. I know. I think I was there a good three, maybe a little over two and a half weeks, something like that. So I think we got about a hundred a day. That's what I remember. I'm not sure, but I think it was a hundred a day. Did y'all so get we, more? We Day the more. Did y'all get more for Charm School? Did I? I don't think so. I think we got the same. I think for Charm School, they just, I remember they gave us makeup artists. We were shocked at that because we never had a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. We never had a clothing. That's another thing. A lot of these reality shows have makeup artists. We didn't have anything. We did our own hair, our own makeup, if we even had makeup on. Most of the time we didn't. Um, so, yeah, I think the only thing we got paid the same. And we got, and that's what I'm saying. Like these new shows, they getting money. Like I want a piece, shit. We didn't build this shit. I want a piece. Um, even though you didn't get a big paycheck from being on these shows, were you able to get money by being boots from Flavor of Love, boots from Charm School, boots was on VH1? Did you make a lot of money in that regard? I feel like after the show, I made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I got into a space where I actually started seeking God then. And I start, cause I start getting into a weird space and I had a um, testimony where I felt like I, I died and went to hell. I had a testimony. I need to put it back up, but I had gotten really drunk one night over some personal stuff. I was leaving a VH1 party my whole life. I just felt like, like I had all the money, even, even from the show on top of what I already had. I just felt like I got to a space. Some people will understand it that are in the industry. You get to a space where you feel like, dang, I have everything, but I'm not happy. I wasn't happy. I don't know what it was, but I, I start, once I start seeking God, it was these demonic spirits we are supposed to get delivered from. I never was delivered from these spirits. And if these churches are not delivering you, it just wasn't right. So I noticed I've never been delivered from no spirits. You know, that's never happened. So I started realizing that's what it was to try to destroy me because that's what demons do. They want to destroy your life. So when I started seeking God back then, I'm telling you, he saved my life because I remember getting drunk and I was driving and I could have crashed. And I woke up right before I hit the wall and turned the wheel. And I felt like that was God turning the wheel. But I remember hearing the devil's voice. I was dropping to hell. And I remember hearing the devil laughing. And what's crazy is I start watching, even recently, I start watching people and their testimonies, and it's similar to what I saw. It was just black, though, what I saw. But when they start speaking about them in hell and God God took them out, it's similar, except for I didn't actually land and I didn't actually see the things they saw. I just would hear him laughing. It was like a real demonic laugh, like the devil's laughing, like I got you. It was that type of, of um, process. And God started showing me over the years what that was and why I was seeing those things. Because I always used to ask God, like, why was I even on this show? Like, what was the purpose? Because remember, I didn't go find this show. This show came to me and I always wondered, and I feel like God was like, you need to share my word. My auntie told me I was supposed to be a prophet because I have a, um, how does she word it? She said, you have a um, boldness to you. You have a very bold spirit. And that's what he uses you for because you just don't care. Like how you said, you don't care and you have a bold spirit. And that's why you are here. And I remember being in church. 
at this this girl I went to high school with, she just invited me one day. This is before Charm, Charm School and Flare of Love. And I'll never forget this moment. I'm still waiting because I know it's coming and I keep thinking about it. Where this lady, I know she was a prophet now. She walked up to me and was laughing hysterically, but it was like a holy laugh. It's hard to explain until you experience it. And she pointed to me specifically in front of the whole church. And she said, God is going to do great things with you. He is going to use you for something amazing. And then I got on the show after that. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've been just asking God, there has to be a reason. And then I remember when I said, um, I think that, oh, and that brings me to the part where I was upset with the black women and saying we're disgraced because I was the only girl on there where I felt they could have used me saying I wasn't going to have sex with Flav. I felt like they should have used that for the young girls and say that was a good thing that uh, that'll teach young girls. You don't have to have sex with any guy or whatever. And they didn't do that. They never even mentioned that. If you notice that, that's never mentioned, like, Boots was the only girl who said, I'm not having sex, I'd rather go home. You know what I'm saying? Nobody mentions that as a good thing. So I don't know if God, I know he used me with that, but I know there's something else. There's a reason for everything that is happening, and I'm just so excited and waiting, you know, to see what it is. Um, but yeah, I think that whatever is coming my way, I know it's going to be his will. I have a lot of things in the work personally um for me in my life going on but like I said with the monitoring spirits and me learning about that I don't really want to share in detail mm -hmm. but yeah I just huh no so I respect that oh, wholeheartedly yeah. so, mm -hmm. I just feel like you know I'm just excited for whatever's coming and whatever should be I feel will be boots I just want to say this has been the most exhilarating three hours I've had in such a long time. Thank you. Um, I really do, first of all, appreciate you joining me in my classroom over here, um, taking out the time to talk about something that you talk about, you know, you talked about it in the past frequently. Well, I ain't going to say frequently, but you've talked about it enough in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm grateful that you took this opportunity to join me and talk about it. Um, I feel like whether, when, when people hear this, whether they agree with you, or not, at least respect the fact that she being honest and what she is saying, what her truth is, and she is standing on it. You can either respect it or not. You can either get mad or not. You, have, you either can get with it or not. And mm -hmm. I appreciate you allowing me to sit <laughs> front row to it. Cause... <laughs> Girl, this was amazing. Like, this was such an amazing chat. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And the way... Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to be a little messy a little bit. Girl, you raised complete hell throughout this whole chat. And for you to end it so beautifully with that message and that story that I'm pretty sure is going to inspire somebody listening. This is why we love reality TV stars. Because, baby, we get it all. We get the crazy. We get the heart. We get the laughs. We get the violence. We get the cries. We get the truth. We get the yelling. We get it all. Yeah, because I think when people hear you say things that may not be positive, like when I was talking about certain people, cast members, I want them to understand it's not always hate. Sometimes it's the truth. And you just got to live in it and, and just change. You know, I, I that's what I feel. I feel like just because I'm speaking something that may not be favorable, it is just for that person to change whatever it is, you know, or whatever had happened, change their ways. And that's it. But that's what happened. You know, and I think people need to stop saying it's hate. Someone's jealous or they're this or they're that. And just look at the facts of the matter. Now, when somebody's just talking, just to talk and there's no facts to back it up, I can see that. But that's why I made it clear, like everything that I've said about the girls, I love all the girls. I feel like they're all my sisters in some way. Even Shay. And, huh? Even Shay, you love and she's, and she's I love all the girls <laughs> in, a, in a godly way. So <laughs> I want to be forgiven. <laughs> so. I love so it. I, I do. What I will say is, even though I don't like her, I do. Mm -hmm. We used to be friends. I do. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like I do say I would never fuck with her like that again. But if she wanted to have a private conversation, I don't know. I don't know as of now because I I just I'm very I feel very what's the word slighted and used. Mm -hmm. when you're using my child is it's is, is this when you were closer to me than anybody that's a problem mm -hmm. and i think I, I couldn't say what what could fix that because that's like a violation to me so maybe there is a possibility that god sees but when you ask me i just don't see it yeah so let's make that clear i don't see it but god does things in mysterious ways so we'll he does see. 
I think in any situation, whether it be yours or anybody out there, both parties have to enter into the conversation willing to hear. Mm-hmm. And while they may not agree with the person's rationale, as long, as long as they are listening to understand how that person thought and how that person felt, mm-hmm. um, and in consuming that information, have the spirit of, we're talking this out just to get clarity and for forgiveness. I think anything is possible. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm going to pray for tonight. Oh. I'm going to pray for tonight. Because we would love to see I'm working it. On, I'm working on praying for my enemies. I'm working on that. That That's one of my main struggles because I have such a... I feel like people are just evil these days and I just don't... I, I can't understand it. Girl, so that's but, a hard that's a hard thing for me because I don't girl, understand how you go there. But friend, let me tell you this, and this is when I get excited because I'm a Christian too, and I love the Lord and I read my Please Bible. Me. Let me tell you something. It talks about in the Bible about praying for your enemies. It talks about blessing your enemies. It talks about um not trying to get back at your enemies. It talks mm-hmm. about forgiving your enemies. I can't quote the scripture. I'm gonna send it to you afterwards because mm-hmm. God says when you do all those things. When you represent me in spite of what other people are doing in the scripture, he tells you all the things he's going to bless you with. And I ain't trying to be greedy, but mm-hmm. I love the Lord. And he is the most sovereign thing I know in yes, this in this universe. So if he is telling me, if a mofo slap me, forgive them because I got blessings and other stuff in store for you. I'm going to listen to him because ain't nothing better or greater. Or, well, you, know you or, can't hit him back either. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and a lot of times in my own career on reality TV and social media, people have been upset with me that I don't get back at people. Oh, they drag me. Oh, but why you not? Why you not? And I'll be trying to explain to people, y'all don't understand the God that I know and what I've seen him do for my life in mysterious ways that I'm not going to sacrifice my blessings and my standing with the right. Lord for no dumbass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, or, or, or some dumbass shit, you know? Does it hurt my ego? Yes. Do I be wanting to get people back? Hell yes, I do. But I know the word and I stand on the word. And my God says, when you forgive, when you don't get back, when you don't gossip, when you don't do nothing in vindictive energy, baby, I got you. And I want to see it all right. on this side of glory. And that's what I'm going to give you, sister. Right. right. So you you may don't want to do it, but because he tell us to do it as his children, just do it. Just, just do it. Be like, Lord. You know what? I, I'm going to tell you this about me. I think I want to do it. Mm-hmm. But I'm the type where I know God doesn't play and he's God. So I know that he says when you do it, you have to do it with your whole heart. So mm-hmm. when I say that, I don't want to do it halfway mm-hmm. and know that that is not how he wants you to come. So what I do is I pray to him and tell him, mm-hmm. you know, I'm struggling with this part because I of love that. that, you know, because that's being the complete honest and not just putting on what I feel he wants to hear. But he wants mm-hmm. to hear why he wants to hear what why I'm struggling so he can help that void. And yes. so that's why I, I think that, yeah, I pray about those things because I feel like that's that's why they say God is you have to have that relationship to speak to him about things mm-hmm. you like your best friend. So I try to l- explain why I'm having an issue with that, because mm-hmm. I do I do. I feel like, too, it comes from manipulation when you're in church. I've had a lot of that where they only address certain sins or they only address certain things. And when they do things bad. So it was like a manipulation thing I had to deal with. They're okay with doing bad to me. But when I do something, you know, so I, I've had to deal with certain things. I think that's mm. why it's more of a struggle because of the things I had to deal with in the past. So mm. I love I love your vulnerability. Thank you so much for sharing <laughs> that with me. I appreciate it. Listen, I'm gonna speak nothing but success, healing and <laughs> happiness over you, girl. You know, thank you, you too. No, you're so welcome. And I just want to once again thank you for stopping by and giving me it's iconic. Okay. Iconic. Exclusive. This is one of the best interviews I've ever had. Oh, thank you. Given by an icon. Given by an icon herself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I did have a song that I did for fun. And a lot of people are enjoying it. So you guys can see. I did a music video for that as well. It's in my link to Instagram. So that's why my name, my rap name is Rissy Thick, because I'm thick. <laughs> and so, but it is at Larissa the one on Instagram. The name on there you'll see is Rissy Thick. So you're at the right place. You'll see the heading. And you can click for my music video. It's called Bad Bitch Alert. 
Um, it was just for fun, but a lot of people are saying I should just go ahead and pursue. Mm -hmm. It was a fun little song. It was a little cute video. So everybody go look at that and just tune in to whatever I have coming up next on my Instagram. Oh my God, yes. Larissa, thank you so much. Everybody, please You're give welcome. Larissa a huge round of applause for this amazing chat we've had on Flame of Love Season 2. Child and everything else underneath the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh.